All right. Hi. Welcome. 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 Zero Hour Podcast, Episode 10, Friday, April 7th, in the Lord's Year of 2023. And we are here with my friend and returning guest, Venomous Panther. I get him right on the screen now. VP, there you are, brother. How you living? Hello. Uh, yeah, doing good. Thank you for inviting me back. Um, yeah. Managed to make it three episodes without me, and here I am. I'm uh, back I again. <laughs> you, you've been missed, and uh, I needed you back, and I'm glad you are able to take the time out and join us today. So thank you. Well, thank you. I'm honored that you actually uh, considered to ask me again, so thank you. Um, but yeah, no, it's been good. Um, it's been a bit of a quieter week for me um, in general compared to... When we last spoke, obviously Lightfall had just been released. I did two 24-hour streams, contest mode and stuff like that. Um, this week's been a little bit bit slower. Uh, not streamed so much this week. I uh, had a couple of migraine flares, which is my my health on my side. So I've just had to take a, a couple of days off and just sort of recuperate, reset. And then, obviously, I'm going to do this with you. And then I've got a holiday on Monday to look forward to. So I'm going to be on annual leave for four days. Okay, good for you. Good for you. I always say breaks are important. You know, stepping away, stepping off console, off PC, um, you know, recharging the batteries, um, because I think it's not just healthy to do that, right, to take that break. But when you do come back, you have, you're re-energized, you have a fresh perspective on things. Maybe you had time to, you know reevaluate you know where you're at or come in with a new attitude or what have you but i i think it's just it's important to take those breaks so you don't get overwhelmed or experience you know the burnout especially on the streaming uh content side when you know it's your number one focus you're doing it 24 7 taking those breaks you know is important yeah, no, I definitely agree with you. So um, we are going on a forest retreat. Um, it sounds really fancy. It's basically we're a log cabin in the middle ass of nowhere. Signal's probably going to be non-existent. We're going to take some digital um, DSLR cameras with us. We're gonna, just going to go photograph some nature and just take a walk okay. in the woods, do some hiking. Um, there's a hot tub on site. So, you know, we're just going to chill in the hot tub and just... Little little re- hot tub shenanigans then? No, there you fully, go. <laughs> Fully recharge, um, like you said, it's just going to be good to have a, a nice little break. Um, for those of my community that are watching today, you're going to be fully covered on YouTube. I've got four videos to go live when I'm away, so you're not even okay. going to know I'm gone. And then okay. before you know it, I'll be back on Thursday. We're back into the shenanigans. Good, good. So you, so you, where, where in the UK do you live? By the way. Uh, so I live in, we're technically considered West Midlands. Um, if you're familiar with the United Kingdom, I'm about 25 miles outside of Birmingham, okay. um, which is like a, one of the major cities, obviously you've got London, Birmingham, Manchester, and a few others. So I'm, I'm down like the, the South coast, um, of England somewhere in like sort of the mid region, not quite as far as Cornwall and stuff, but okay. not as high up as Scotland. So I'm sort of somewhere sort of like. They call it like West Midlands, so that's that's my general sort of area. Okay, okay. And you're going so you, where you're going so in the forest is that like way off the grid or it's a uh, we're going to a place like Colford, I think it's called. It's about 25, 30 miles away from where I live, so it's about from here to like Birmingham, for example. Um, but it's a very foresty area, so it's it's like log cabins, woodland area. Okay. Um, kind of like a retreat off the road away from the cities away from the towns it's just gonna it's gonna be nice just to have a complete detachment to social media playstation pc and all that it's just gonna be me nature and a camera for four days good good well and my fiance as well obviously i'm not gonna leave her here but (laughs) (laughs) all right (laughs) she'd kill me yeah just the, have her hold down the stream while you're uh, while you're on solo vacay, man. You know what I mean? Oh, she she does a lot for me already. So she'll be alright. She needs a break as well. I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, for myself, there are no breaks in the foreseeable future. 
Um, so I will be living vicariously through you while you are on your <laughs> sabbatical. Okay. I, I will uh, I'll enjoy it enough for both of us. Hopefully you'll get some energy recharged. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Well, listen, man. Um, for those that are viewing right now, uh, as always with the Zero Hour Podcast, any questions that you have for myself or VP, feel free to post those in chat. If you're lurking, feel free. Let your voice be heard. You know, my motto here at Sloop Gaming is let's level up together. The best way to do that is by communicating, chatting, engaging each other. It could be something that VP and I are discussing if you want to stay on topic. Or if there's just something random uh, related to Destiny 2, online gaming, culture, what have you, feel free to submit that question in chat. Um, and we'll bring it up, we'll discuss it, we'll toss it around and, uh, you know, and take it from there. So that is always an option for all the viewers out there. And look, VP is a great human being. Uh, he is a tremendous uh, explainer, instructor, Ray Sherpa. If you haven't had a chance to view him live, uh, on Twitch or check out any of his other socials. Links to all that is uh, through my panels, through all of my socials. You'll be able to get in contact with VP or just click on him directly. Um, highly suggest you uh, check this person's content out. Um, he's there to help. Uh, always accessible through his Discord, through his socials. So. Um, definitely go ahead and support him. Okay, so... Yep, so for those who are interested, I normally stream my schedule. is uh, Monday to Thursday from reset up until about midnight my time. It's about six, seven hours worth of, of streaming and helps available for people. So for those on uh, Eastern Coast, I'm going to work it out now. Uh, it's going to be about 12.30 for you guys, uh, 5.30 for me, up until midnight my time, and you'll be five hours behind me. So right. I don't really want to work that out right now. About 7 p.m. for you, I think. Right. So, so I think we've established that. So based upon Eastern Standard Time, VP is five hours ahead of us now. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, five okay. hours ahead now. So anyone that is you know, Central Mountain or Pacific Time, basically just add an hour um, and then you'll be able to correlate your times with with VP. So FYI on that. Uh, Panther, there's a lot going on, man. I mean, the last you and I left off, we went pretty in-depth about the launch of Lightfall specifically the root of nightmares raid contest yeah. mode how that it, it just all... so happened as well that zavala had died lance reddick on my and... episode of all things oh, man and the passing of lance reddick uh obvious you know i mean uh, it, it's it still hurts <laughs> it's um it's still shocking i guess apparently he had some <laughs> heart failure, what have you. Yeah, um, ischemic heart disease was what they finally came out with when they yeah. released the autopsy. So, I, I mean, you know, again, condolences to his family <laughs> and friends and anyone that direct ties to, to Lance, obviously, the Bungie family out there, and, you know, up in all the Destiny 2 community who, you know, looked upon you know, what he did with Commander Zavala and his voice acting and just the, the impact it's had on our lives as gamers. I mean, he'll sorely be missed. I mean, that goes without saying. Um, but since then, um, you know, there has been some healing. There's been a lot of, like, you know, the tower vigils and things in flying in social media, inside and outside of Desi community. So, like, a lot of healing has been going on. Um, but we found ourselves with not necessarily an IRL passing, but an in-game passing with Amanda Holiday, 
I was going to touch on that. So in, in episode seven, we um, talked about um, the Forsaken campaign and we were saying about, <laughs> what I said about my opinion is that it was like, it was iconic because they killed off Kate Six and they showed that, you know, they don't care who they kill off. They will write it in and they'll kill them off like that in a heartbeat. And then like a week after our episodes, I do the weekly story and Amanda's dead. I'm like, what? <laughs> what the fuck is this? I know. I, I, I really want to be careful about wh wh what, characters we name drop in this episode because who knows what will happen in the week. They're going to be next. <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, <laughs> a lot of foreshadowing going on um, on I the feel like, Did you report. ever watch Death Note going off track, but like yeah. the anime Death Note, I feel like this is what it is. <laughs> Just a oh, man. really weird version of it. <laughs> well, I, I guess whoever wants to see the next character, uh, you know, eat dirt. You know, post that in chat, and uh, we'll drop Here's our name predictions. For you. <laughs> but Amanda is gone. Okay, um, I know I put out some content. You know, because the question is, you know, will she or should she be resurrected as a guardian or come and come back in any capacity? What are your thoughts on that, VP? interesting to see how they write it in because at the moment we're in a precarious position in our storyline where the tower's been infected by the witness the link's been created so what does that mean like so the the link's been created there was all this uncertainty about the veil what it is and stuff the witness you see the, the i don't want to spoil too much just in case but at the end you see like the witness infecting the traveler you know so does that mean he's able to create new guardians is like what we've got now the the, the end like if they all go that's it and, and by infecting uh, the traveler you mean creating the triangle and entering the traveler is that what yeah. you're referring to yeah yeah so like yeah he's a. Uh, well, I don't know really how to say it, but like his ships went inside the, the yeah. triangle that he created. So yes. I'm guessing, in a certain extent, the traveler's compromised. Of course, you'd have to think. Surely, um, what they do? I mean, did they bring her back as a guardian? I mean, she was pivotal to some points of the story, but she wasn't really a ever like a main character. But then we haven't had a hunter vanguard for ages, and obviously. They joke about it. Um, if you start as a new guardian, I found this out recently. Uh, they joke about how ever since Cade Six death, the Hunter Vanguard position has been considered like cursed, a bit like you know the Harry Potter uh, Death Against the Dark Arts position. It's been cursed, and nobody wants to take that position. Obviously, we have Crow, but he's never actually gone as like an actual Vanguard. So, does that mean that? we get him finally as a vanguard are we going to get amanda resurrected as a hunter vanguard like where do we go from here it's interesting potentially it could be any of all good point and i know you don't like fence sitting <laughs> i'm sorry i've done it again but... I, I don't like fence sitting at all but we'll get to that let's 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 parking lot that for now all right and then i'll lambast you on it later but let, let me let me bring these points up all right so number one you mentioned hunter vanguard interestingly enough as i recall running a battlegrounds mission and you know you get different dialogue every time you run it i recall crow stating and i quote i sent some of my hunters out to do x as if he is has assumed the role of the hunter vanguard or the narrative team is communicating that he has some authority in some capacity to issue orders out to other hunters under the Vanguard umbrella. That's how it's, it's, that's how it, like it, it's communicated in that voice line to me. I don't know if you recall that specific voice line or not. Do you remember hearing no, that? No, not really. Okay. Um, Cause I don't think I'm taking crazy pills. I'm very confident in hearing that yep. voice line. You're probably right. right. Okay, so that was interesting to hear, right? And actually, I, I believe I heard that, or maybe at least it resonated and it paid attention to me. I paid attention to it post Amanda Holiday's death. Okay. Oh, so, interesting. Okay. I might have to go through some battlegrounds then. Yeah. So I wanted to, I wanted to bring that up, right? Just to kind of, you know, raise an eyebrow on that voice dialogue that you hear in the battlegrounds mission, and then. As far as Amanda Holiday being 
resurrected as a guardian. So a couple points on that. So can guardians, are there new guardians being created, right? So considering the traveler's compromise, as you said, right? As you yeah. stated. So there's still new lights in the game, right? There's still, um, I think I had another viewer or commenter on one of my streams or posts um, state that they, that there's something in the lore that refers to a ghost flying around like spotted in Neomuna, right? Um, so like there are ghosts out there looking for guardians. So I think that's established, but whether new ghosts are being created to look for new guardians or whether it's just like in existing ones, uh, either before or since the traveler's been compromised, I can't find or heard anything that like says yes or no. So I'm just kind of in the place where ghosts are out there. I don't know if new ghosts are being like manifested by the traveler. It would kind of make sense. Like maybe they still are because new lights are still in the game or are those new lights getting res for the first time just because of the existing ghost population. I don't know if you've seen or heard any lore regarding that point. No, I've not heard anything. Um, and obviously this is just my opinion, my take. So yeah, I, I, I was sort of just thinking, well, if they bring Holiday back, how are they going to write it in? But then if they've already got something saying that, you know, there's still existing ghosts out there looking for guardians or for people worthy of the light. It's easy to write in if they don't decide to go down that route and they go another route it'll be interesting to see how they write it in from a writing perspective you know they've done really well for the last couple of couple of campaigns couple of seasons you know the the seasonal storylines have been really well thought of so it'll be interesting to see how they go forward and i noticed that this week we didn't get a, a story mission uh, we had week five which was um holiday's death but week six we haven't got any new like story or any new yeah. uh weekly missions or anything to do obviously it's just the same pinnacle stuff so i wonder if that's a decision they've made because of what they want to write in or if it was just a, a break they take or because it's easter i know obviously for them it's i don't know if they celebrate it the same way but well the it's interesting line it is, skips a week right well the quest line is concluded right so that week of amanda's passing that was I think week five. Yeah. So right right after that, the the quest was over with. Right? Like there is no check in with the Queen's Guard the next week. Like it you completed it and got your reward and that was it. Whether they're gonna introduce something new, uh, you know, to kind of flesh out the story regarding the Queen's Guard or something new, or maybe something new happens in Neomuna. Uh, that still has yet to be seen. I don't know. I don't. That would kind of be unprecedented. I don't think we've ever gotten like a seasonal quest at the halfway or end of the season. It's always been something that kind of starts in the beginning and then week to week develops and they expand. And it, you know, right? And then it ends up, then you end up completing it. Um, so that still has yet to be seen. But I think the question remains is. Will and or should Amanda Holiday be resurrected? What do you say? I'm, yes trying, to, I'm trying to think of if she's done anything like <laughs> pinnacles of the story. I mean, other than last week, she's only really been known as somebody that gives you ships and stuff. She hasn't really had a, a like an actual story. They brought her backstory in recently, but then they killed her off like the week after. Yeah. So it's I, I, I'd probably say no. Like she's not really been a, a main NPC for years, and you know, the, they give her the spotlight the same week they're going to murder her. So, like, does she want to be? Does she deserve to come back as a guardian? I mean, she's been pivotal to like the law of like keeping the ships running and stuff. Yeah, but like from a from a guardian perspective, from a player, I have only known her to sell ships right at the very beginning, back in the Red War, and then. 
whatever happened last week. <laughs> and that's it. Those are the two points you meet her. Well, I she's taken more of a progressive a and active role since the Red War, right? Because with the Guardians losing the light, a lot of the, uh, you know, evacuating and reconnaissance and then retaliation against, you know, Dominus Gaul and the Red Legion, that was all left to basically the, the non-Guardian militia, you know, which uh, Amanda was at the forefront of. So I don't think we can discount her too much. I, I, I think as an NPC, nah, I mean... she's, she's still valuable. But I, I get what you're saying. She's really just as far as like in-game progress, someone that, you know, you got your green sparrow from, you know, eight nine years ago and then there's really no reason to go back to her right um, oh no i tell a lie she was um the, the the prime rewards they introduced from amazon she the prime rewards go to her so you have to visit her like once a month to collect the rewards and then yeah. and then that's it for the for the another month yeah. see you again in 30 days amanda cheers for the exotic armor and exactly. shit and it's also interesting that you brought up the prime rewards because that's a great way to support yourself venomous panther and myself here at Sloop Gaming, that if you are an Amazon Prime member, um, a free and kind way to support our channels is to use your Prime Twitch subscription or gift it to somebody else to Venomous Panther. So that's definitely something that you could take advantage of. But Amanda Holiday, smash the subscribe button and smash <laughs> that subscribe button on YouTube. Um, but Amanda Holiday, listen. If she does end up getting arrested, which I, I listen, I know every every fanboy and girl out there are beating the drum to. Right? I think everybody wants to see it. It's not going to happen this season. Like I would be no. shocked. I would be shocked if it happened next season. Uh, I think they need the dust to settle on it. It could the play happen. would be to do it for the final shape. Yeah, it could it could be like a cliffhanger going into the final shape because you don't know, you know, what type of guardian is she going to come back as? You know, like what, you know, is she, how is what type of you know who is she going to be? Like she, you know, she'll, it's a blank slate, right? It's a tabula rasa when you're yeah. risen. She's not going to remember who she was, right? Oh god, I hope that means that her and Crow can finally make up because I've been hating that dynamic for yeah. for ages. A Dave MC Dave FAC. Thank you for the follow, brother. Appreciate it. Um, welcome to the show. If you have any questions for Venomous Panther and myself, feel free to drop them in chat. Right now, we're just discussing the passing of Amanda Holiday, the possibility of her getting resurrected. Definitely not this season, in my opinion, or even next season, but potentially the end of the year, maybe as a cliffhanger. I, I think from a story writing perspective, it makes more sense to do it towards Final Shape, because by that time, you think seasons are 70-odd 70, 70 days long, so we're talking, what, three months? If we don't do it next season, that's six months. If we don't do it until like the end of the season after, that's nine months. Nine months have passed. And people aren't going to remember that she even died. Or if they did, it's going to be like a fleeting memory at that point. And then you're going to get a story of where she suddenly self reses as a guardian. It's going to be epic. It'll be amazing, especially heading into the final shape from what they're setting up, like the end of light versus dark. And then she comes back and tilts the scales in your favor. It'd be amazing. I, yeah, I, I definitely want to touch on if she does get res, how that could factor in as a cliffhanger. But let me parking like that. But what about the way that she died? The cutscene, the the story mission that we were through uh, for the seasonal was, quest. What 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 are your thoughts on that? It was horrendous. Like she died in a blazing inferno. It was almost similar to um ah oh, fuck, what's her name? You mean horrendous? Like you didn't enjoy it? You felt she could have went out better, or just horrendous? Like just. You know, it was, oh, it's a brutal way to go either way. way I mean, go. it was horrendous, horrendous yeah. for her as well, especially being like a non-Guardian, like, you know, just being burnt to a crisp. Yeah. I mean, 
it just felt wrong as well. Like Aramis trying to like hand like ha- hold a hand out. It's like I tried to warn you. It's like get the fuck out of here. You were trying to be like <laughs> screw us from the start. You know you got the raw emotions. And then Zavala does the devotion, bravery, sacrifice thing at her grave. Yeah. Like you get the same sort of speech as you got from like an original guardian back in like Destiny One, Destiny Two days. It was just uh, the whole thing was really touching. It was horrible to see yeah. her die that way. Well, it was um. Yeah. I'm trying to think of her name, the Exo Stranger's sister. Uh, Al- oh. Is it? You mean Elsie's the Exo Stranger? It's Anastasia. Anna. Anastasia. Anastasia. I couldn't think of it. I was like, Ada? No, that's not right. Yeah, it, it's the same sort of way that she died um, during the first collapse, where she was like still in the bunker and then, you know, the explosion just basically nuked everything that she <laughs> yeah. was touching. And they show like it's a lumped over skeleton at a computer console afterwards. <laughs> It was just like similar flashbacks to that. You just see that the, was the such light the behind her. That callous <laughs> depiction of her death. Like there was no, there was no like love whatsoever. At least like Amanda went out like, you know, like in style. In, I guess in like, color. In color. You, just see, like... you know, Anastasia's death scene was just <laughs> basically was like hitting, stick though. figure theater. <laughs> For, for anyone who didn't watch it, it was it was hard hitting, especially with like the story behind her teaching red and stuff, and it it really tugged on the heartstrings. And then you get the stick figure drawing of her skeleton. You're like, all right, I can't take this seriously now. Well, VP in chat, Dave MC Dave FAC three says, Amanda's death feels like it's going to play into Crow's story more than Amanda's. She's just a bit part character that it would be very unusual to then randomly make her a guardian. Well said. See, I, I, I agree with that. I agree. I, I said she's been an NPC for years, like a real backseat I one. know. Well, if I'm anything. fucking defending her, man. <laughs> I, 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 I give Amanda more weight than you do, so I'm on the other side of the fence. If anything, it's just going to be a chance to bury the hatchet with Crow, because obviously like, he did her dirty, and then didn't remember why he did her dirty. And now she's not going to remember why she hated him in the first place. So it's going to be like a, well, like you said, it's a fresh start for both. Right. If she comes back. But I, I kind of agree to that statement. If she comes back, she'll be more of a a helping hand for to sell Crow as the good guy. He's never been accepted as the Hunter Vanguard. Let's be but, honest. Since Cade 6 death, Crow, he's never been accepted. But Crow, like Crow is a facade for who he truly is. Which is Aldrin Sov. He's always going to be Aldrin Sov. No matter how many like, times you try and pull the wall over Guardian's eyes, he's the fucker that pulled the trigger on Cade 6. <laughs> right? And the fact that the crow went through the steps with confronting the nightmares, right? And using like the, the voodoo stick that Eris created. Right? Oh, yeah. I forgot Season of the so, Haunted. In the Season of the Haunted, he confronted Aldrin and basically because he tried to push him away and separate himself, but he realized that he can't push away who he is or else he'll always live in that 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 conflict that like sways his personality, right? Like clouds his judgment. Right? At least that's like the narrative beat that I took away from it. But I think, especially with Amanda's passing, is that Crow is going to come to the that crossroads again, right? Where he oh either, for sure, right? Because you know when when as you put when Zavala is kneeling, you know, at her coffin or her dead body, whatever, right? And he's going through what's left of it, what's left of it, right? And uh, you know, devotion, bravery, sacrifice, and then Crow turns to us. And I mean, it was it wasn't Crow looking at us to me like that was older and saw saying, yeah, we're going to we need to get revenge. We need get, to fuck this gonna, guy up. We're going to get our vengeance here. And you let me know when you're ready because I'm locked and loaded, you know, and I think you're going to see Crow just and maybe like in what? season of the deep, it'll be more, you know, focus on like the darkness. It's as an entity. Right, not like the witness being agent of the darkness or a rogue right. agent of he, the he, darkness. It's Might weird s- how they do the story with the darkness as well. Like you said, like focusing more on the darkness. It's been a, 
it's been a thing for some seasons now, isn't it? I mean, Beyond Light, it was about like the darkness power, and um, I just played through the Shadow Keep campaign again. I needed a, a exotic helmet. It's neither him nor there, digressing a little bit, but that's very touched on the darkness speaking through your ghost, and you relive nightmares and stuff. And you know, now we've got a face to the darkness, but it's it's always been there if that yeah. makes sense it's always been manipulating the strings playing with the storyline yeah where you need to be sort of thing it'd be nice to see crow snap and go back to aldrin Sov of six years ago when that's he was what i want to see trigger. that's what i want to i want to see crow just like get triggered and just oh, like i hope it, it's aramis as well oh and, just can and you just imagine go the... off and then and then I mean, listen, I'm speaking like a doomsday guy here. I want to see Crow get triggered, right, and kill off another pivotal character, an NPC or what have you, and then that would justify one of our main char- like main NPCs killing off Crow. Like, I just want to see the bodies hit the floor. You know what I mean? Oh, so you want like the floodgates to open? So you I do want not the want him to kill something to from the other side. You and want I, him to kill I, someone I, I from our like, side. The luckiest or the strongest person standing. So when we go into the final shape, it's like you know, like, survival of the fittest. You're Buckle playing up, for bitches. your life. It's going to be a wild ride. You're playing. You know, like you're you're living your last life, basically. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. I, yeah, I think that type I, of shakeup would just be tremendous for the game i hope it goes one for one i hope he fucking puts a bullet through aramis finally gets rid of that fucking bitch and then i don't know he snaps or something and threatens osiris or fucking like saint 14 or something and then zavala just has to put him out of his misery like old yellow just take him around the back and just <laughs> <laughs> well dave in chat says he can kill ikora only thing she's done in three years since is started playing when was opening a door during the Witch Queen campaign. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Ikora Ray, I love how like the Guardians can like just switch their subclass elements like on the fly. You know what I mean? <laughs> Where we have like this tremendous amount of cooldown if we do it ourselves. And it's a side rant there, but yeah, <laughs> Ikora's I, I just like you. live along, chaos reach. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, she's. Ikora Ray is like a glorified uh like door opener, I suppose, right? Uh she also leads the one. um uh what's that the fucking the the shadow the hidden the shadow yeah the hidden thank you. I was trying to think of who they were. But she's responsible for like the you know the scouts basically. She's the number one uh student had one not necessarily a <laughs> disciple of Osiris, right? But she was recognized as being like a ruthless guardian. And I remember the lore. What was the name of that shotgun? I want to say it was the Invictus. Does that sound oh, yeah. familiar to you? Yeah, the Invictus was a shotgun. Okay, so the Invictus was Ikora Ray's shotgun, if I'm not mistaken. And she was a legend in the Crucible as she was ascending the ranks in the Vanguard before she got where she was and then you know she just developed like this calm i guess you know she like when she hit like her true warlock enlightenment she lost that you know that angst or whatever right when she wasn't doing like daily ops or anything here you go just just for your for your thing um it's called the invective you were close okay um the lore on it is i tried to talk them down they made me grab my they made a grab for my ghost after that it was a short conversation <laughs> i call a ray there you go like that's badass right there right <laughs> like that's badass you know where's that i why do we get the door opener <laughs> i don't know and like a lot of her dialogue in uh like in the red war like uh when you know we all lost our light and you know she's like reflecting upon like this is my last life or uh, you know, this could be my final death um you know and like her and zavala are questioning everything and like i get it but it was almost like some of her like reflections were like almost over the top right or like too too introspective but maybe that's just yeah. like the warlock in her that's what warlock 
I guess as well, you got to think like obviously some to, to the law. She was growing up with Osiris as um, you know the mentor, and obviously she was like a, a force in the crucible. But then she became a leader, and obviously like a leader of the vanguard, she has to set an example. I guess, and she probably can't go around throwing nova bombs every time she feels pissed or something. Do you know yeah. what I mean? She's probably got to you know live by a, a code of some say. Because yeah. you look at Zavala, he. He hasn't been on the front lines for ages, but all of the law points to him being an absolute badass. Like he was raised through like the Iron Lords at the at the temple, yeah. um, you know. And then, but like now, how often would we see that? It, it's I guess it's the same sort of thing, isn't it? They're leaders for a reason. They've got to lead the front lines, lead the forces. Yeah. You know, they're the commanding officer, and we're the the cannon fodder that has to go out and do the dirty work. Essentially, well, it's just like Shax too. Like, who doesn't want to see Shax like get in the oh, mix? Can you imagine Shax in the crucible? <laughs> Throw more grenades. <laughs> I mean, like, give us a cutscene with Shax being Shax, man. You know, or better yet, and I don't want to go too far left. I want to get back to amanda because there's a couple other points i need to raise but like you know when do we get the backstory on when Shax lost his horn man you know what i mean like that's what i want to know like what he's been one horn for ages like was it like some like fallen kel and like you just got out of the way and the sword swiped it off was it like and did you lose it in the battle of six fronts was it twilight gap did stupid. you lose it then like i don't know and, like, like you know him and saint 14 went into the trials <laughs> uh, yeah did, did saint hit, hit chop it off guillotine. i mean who knows dude you know like that's you know hopefully we'll get that at some point but let's get back to holiday because so, you said you got a couple more points so on holiday so i, I guess in conclusion you know should she get res I, I don't think she should, but I think she will. Right. I, I Welcome think... to the team. We have cookies. I don't think she should get rest either, but she probably will. So, okay. Now the question is, okay, let's say the narrative team says, yeah, we're going to go ahead. We're going to res her. Right. That's what the community wants. That's what our team wants. The win-win. So if it does happen, like if I'm on the narrative team, if it's my turn to get up on the whiteboard and start, get put in my thoughts i think the best time would be i guess so there's four seasons and every expansion so at the conclusion of season of the fourth season during lightfall that should be a cut season a, a, a cliff a cut scene cliffhanger that'll bring us into the final shape right because it's not just, oh, there's new expansion, Final Shape, and all the other story beats that have been built up. But, oh my god, Amanda is coming back. And yeah. how is she going to come back? What is she going to come back as? I think people's gut reaction is for her to come back as a hunter, right? Because, again, who is the hunt leader of the Hunter Vanguard? See, I'm guilty of that. I said she should come back as a hunter. She kind of looks like a hunter frame, right? Like, she hangs out with hunters. But I got to give... Uh, listen, I got to give uh, credit to Captain of uh, Lord Guardian Council, right? One of the leaders there in the Discord and in the clan. Um, he said that she'll come back as a titan, right? And the reason, the reason being is because her personality... And her actions in game in the cutscenes resonate more with the Titan archetype than it does the Hunter archetype. Right? She's always she's steadfast, headstrong, uh, leadership. She's always the first to go into battle. You know, strike first, ask questions later. She's more. Uh, uh, she's more action than just like reacting. You know, um, she was also like raised under the wing of Commander Zavala since she arrived to the last city as a child. So she's had the upbringing from Zavala as a Titan. Um, See, now that you say this, it's it's open more fucking questions because like, if she gets raised at the end, let's say she gets raised at the end of Lightfall, obviously we know. And she's of... got like fucking arc. Titan 
like arc shining and she like slams her fist on the fucking Not floor. Just that, but we, we we know that Lance has passed away, so what are they gonna do with his character? So now it opens the potential possibility of that they're gonna they're gonna kill off Savala and she's gonna replace as the, the lead of Titans. Listen. Possibility. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but to, possibility. Even down the, it opens up ha, and... How about this scenario? Like, let, let, let's keep going with that. How about this scenario? So this is a way at the conclusion of the last season, right? Crow is in dire straits, and who comes out of the fucking woodwork but Amanda Holiday as an arc as a titan <laughs> doing like a slam <laughs> to thunder kill crash. a thunder or thunder crashing to save crow and basically does like you know the arnold schwarzenegger come with me if you want to live extends her <laughs> hand out right get, get to the ship right <laughs> we got to get <laughs> get to the ship right get to the chopper they get to the chopper and like extends her hand out and crow is just like has like this omg look on his emo face and like fucking <laughs> end scene dude right and then maybe coinciding with that, Zavala is doing something to like maybe like save us or someone else and his ghost gets killed, right? Maybe like Possibly. Maybe the make him so listen, make him not so much like dead, but like uh like a non factor if that makes sense. Like um listen, a non light. At the very Zavala has to get like if the, the weakest character Zavala can die to would have to be a Tormentor. Like, in uh, ideally... All the Witness. Well, I'm saying the weakest. Like, oh, at the very yeah, least, yeah. Zavala would die by the hands of a Tormentor. But ideally, yeah. the Witness should be the one to, like... Or, Zavathun gets rezzed, right? For somehow... I don't want her coming back. Like, I mean, she, like... Her ghost is still alive, so technically she can still be resurrected, right? Ah, oh, fuck. What if... Like, th this is down the rabbit hole and completely far-fetched, but we, we've we been hearing rumors about Ziva Arath all throughout, like, last season, and then obviously she hasn't really made an appearance this season when a lot of people from, like, the lore perspective said that she'd probably be, like, the final boss in, like, Root of Nightmares or maybe the dungeon or something. What if, and this is a very big what if... Savathun's ghost has somehow assigned itself with Zivu Arath, and Zivu Arath kills off Zavala. She's yet to be in play. She, she's the last sister that needs to come from the Hive legacy. We so, killed everyone else. I get what you're saying, but try to try to think of yourself as part of the narrative team. So that would mean, like, if you take Zavathun's ghost, right? Who's I can't remember. I can't remember the name right now. Uh, it's Imaru. Amaru, Amaru here. <laughs> What's up, glitter bombs? Right, okay. <laughs> glitter bombs. <laughs> right, that's what he says, right? So it's like if you take Amaru and then have Amaru. Well, I guess Ziva... What if he's just looking out for himself because Savathun disintegrated in front of us? The ghost got away, yeah, but she died. If you like... align Amaru with Zivo Irath, then you're basically like writing off Zavathun, right? Unless you a new ghost reses her, which I don't think would. That, I don't. Does she need to come back though? At the end of the Witch Queen, it was kind of final. I mean, she died. She turned to dust in front of us. Yes, she potentially right, but, could be rezzed, but, but like, where's her guardian, ghost? Like, she's still a guardian, right? Like, you know, she's a risen. I should say, like, a she's risen. She's a half breed. She's risen. Right? Like anytime a guardian reses a dead being, they're risen, right? Like that's it. There's no there's no dispute, right? So she's a risen, right? And she can channel the light. But as long as your ghost is still alive, then You could technically be rezzed. You can be rezzed. And Amaro. But what is if hive ghosts alive. don't work like that? I, I don't I think a ghost is they're a not, ghost. They're, they're not our ghosts, though, are they? They're not the same as us. They haven't chose technically from like a light side. No, They've they are. The they are. Because remember, they decided to go that path. It's not like hive ghosts are like manifested. They're like existing. No, no, so they, were, they, they were our ghosts, but they, they chose dark. They've been infected with dark magic. Yeah. To, yeah. Be, to, to res hive. Like, there's got to be some. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's got to be something there. It's not the same as like light and light 
you know one plus one equals two if you're if you're gonna go to like a completely different entity like a hive it's a half breed it's not a light it's not a light bearer it's not a guardian it's not a human it's not an a like an exo or an awoken or anything like that it's a completely separate being and breed so surely from the same aspects of things you'd have to treat it in the same such what if theirs is they have a guardian and they have a ghost and they can res but if the guardian's uh body gets disintegrated like savathun turns to dust in front of us is there anything left to res at that point it'd be interesting if she comes back but how do you spin it like she's Here, she's been an enemy how, here's for how you seasons. spin it here's how you spin it and maybe the traveler is a lot smarter than we give it credit for so instead of allowing amaru well we were gonna we were gonna kill him we were gonna shoot amaru right like we we're yeah. locked and loaded ready to go and all of a sudden the traveler absorbs the ghost right so amaru goodbye you know you're inside yeah. the travel right for lack of a better phrase now when the witness enters the traveler technically amaro is still inside of there so oh, i think amaro still has a role to play and maybe amaro with knowing what's going on inside what the witness is doing to the traveler is able to now res zavathun who the goddess of trickery and deceit is perhaps able to maybe either a get back in bed with the witness right or b get back in bed with her sister zivu irath and be able to make amends for all of her bullshit because now she doesn't have she doesn't have the worm anymore right so now she lost the worm right and she's finally an option c right if we think about the story from savathun's witch queen storyline we learned that the witness tricked savathun into accepting the worm the traveler was never going to go there but it actually it was yeah. but they got tricked by the witness yeah so we were saying about balance tippers scale tippers you know towards the final shape what if she's a because she's all she's known all along what the witness is going to do she tried to hide the traveler away from the witness she knew the witness was coming she was actually trying to do fight us for the better good the better good sort of thing as they they try and spin the storyline yeah so she already knew the witness was coming what if her ghost was absorbed with the same information that's why the traveler tried to go to orbit and fight the witness out there rather than in the last city because it kind of knew from amaru that that's what was going to happen yeah there's so many plot holes there's so many things you can go what if with it's annoying <laughs> you can go down this rabbit hole all night <laughs> but i kind of just like to bring things full circle i think in regards to amaru uh zavathun zivu irath the witness with potentially killing off zavala right because obviously no more lance reddick Zavala is already pretty much written through throughout Lightfall. So yeah, I think, I think they said that it was written up to like the final shape or like to the beginning of the final shape. So I obviously, whatever that reworks that they they have to do something, right? Because yeah, of course, right. So the logical thing would be to kill the character off. Like, I think it's going to happen, right? I don't think we I don't think we get Zavala in the final shape, right? I, no, but either, I think yeah, I I think that's the first thing that happens is Zavala eats it. Right. I think it's less likely that Savathun will kill Zavala. If Savathun comes back, it's going to be to stop Zivu. Well, I'm just saying, the there's witness. like, I'm just throwing all these names out there. I think somehow it's going to come into play because, like, my theory would be, like, if Zavala dies at the end of the Lightfall, right? If they somehow they're able to work that in, which I don't think will happen, right? But I think. I think it'll Amanda, happen at the beginning of the final shape. It'll shape. happen at the beginning of the final shape. But in regards to Amanda Holiday, I think she gets res, man. I think I think she'll get res at the end of the year, at the end of the this expansion. And I think it'll she, be so good if she and Zava, um not Zavala, she and Savathian get res to the light side to tip the balance against Zivu Arath and the witness. I, I think she comes in with a thunder crash and saves Crow, puts that hand out. That'd be amazing as well. I can, just can't wait to look. Like, Crow's look just looking up yellow at eyes, her, just like, like Amanda. 
and then end scene, right? And then you, and then we got to wait, whatever. <laughs> 30 two, days for the next for Two the months, next one. 30 days until, you know, the next release, you know, like that would be poetic right there, you know? Um, I think but, it'd be a good way to end. And it'd be, a, it'd be a good way to, like, begin the killing off of Savala as well. Like, she's back, so she's already sort of written in. Yeah. If she gets written in as a Titan because of all the, you know, the characteristics you said, it would make sense. Yeah. But I, I think I'd be all right. I think I'd swallow that because obviously we know he's going to be written out anyway. And I think, you know, she being written in, taken over, she was under his wing the whole time you know, from, from a child. I couldn't think of a, probably a better person to take his spot. Not that anyone could fill his shoes. It's impossible. But, you know, from a from a law perspective, it would be it would make sense from a narrative. I can't see her coming back as a warlock. It's just there's nothing about I don't it. think they're going to kill off Ikora. It's not likely now that, you know, Cade's gone, the Crow isn't really fully integrated as a hunter vanguard, and Savala's potentially being written out. I can't see Ikora dying. Although I might be end up eating my words. So, you know, we're at episode 10 now. Yeah. However long it is until the final shape, I could potentially regret saying this, but yeah. I can't see it. Yeah. Narratively speaking, it makes no sense to kill her off. If anything, it makes more sense to kill off Savala because at the moment there's no way to recharacterize him unless you get somebody to fill his character. But then who do you get? Who do you cast as him after, you know, the wonderful work that Lance has done? There's nobody that will fill those shoes ever. Another thing that popped up from the passing of Amanda, and I thought it was one of the greatest lines that we've had in quite a while. And like, and you, you mentioned Aramis and it does come from Aramis. She makes a great point <laughs> over the, when you go to the farm um, or, you know, when you go to the helm, go to the farm, go to Marasov, go to the projector, go to the helm. Like, that's ridiculous, all that back and forth, but I digress. I, I, I think it's a hollow projection that you listen to on the farm. And Aramis basically calls out Misrax for like his bullshit, right? And basically says, how dare you judge me? That's like the pot calling the kettle black. Because you're doing the same thing that I'm doing, except you just chose to align yourself with the tower, with the vanguard to protect your people our people as seeking like a power blanket to kind of you know throw over to protect yourselves and, and your people well i'm doing the same thing but with the disciple right or the witness rather you know and i'm it's... and i'm just i'm trying to protect my people and go to a source of power that i can throw over you know you know to save ourselves from extinction because they're holding all the cards right now and you guys are scrambling to protect yourselves. Like, even though it's dark versus light, fundamentally, she's doing the same thing that Misrax is. And it's like, I listened to her you say could, you that. You say that the, um, the Fallen have been screwed over way too many times. <laughs> they, they lost the light during the first collapse. Yeah. They're now in the in the middle of a light versus dark struggle between the witness and the last city. Yeah. Well, me, we can say wholeheartedly out of all of this, the fallen have been fucking stuffed. Yeah. <laughs> I the, feel sorry for them. Yeah. The fallen are like the gypsies of the universe. You know. Man, they've been they've been hit hard. They lost um, the light. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're, they're now they're now they're now being fought between light and dark. Yeah. They're they're resilient, um, but. Aramis makes a great point when she, you know, calls out Misrax oh, for yeah, his for actions. Sure. Like, um, it's like me saying, don't do this, and then do something the exact same thing, just on the opposite side of the scale. Yeah. Now, you have to wait, you know, like, their, their intentions are the same, right? They're there to protect their people. To It's your know, point of view that makes it different, because yeah. you think he's doing it for the good, and she's doing it for the bad, because of the light versus the dark versus the saga. Yeah, if you take the light and dark off the table, they're both they're doing, doing the same thing. They're doing they're doing the same exact thing, right? And she even goes so far, like you know, I want, and she recognizes uh, Misrax's daughter, um, and I can't remember her name off the top. Of Ida, Ida, right? As being like one of the, like, you know, she's like the 
know, she's the Gen Z, you know, she's the future of society for Elixir society. You know what I mean? Um, even though. Do you think Meekthrax sits on it at night? He just sits there and just goes, ah, oh, fuck, she's got me. She makes a good point. And then, like, am I on the losing side? Like, they've just lost a big character. We are kind of scrambling to fight ourselves. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time that Misrax has been misguided and gone a, down a wrong path. I mean, Homeboy used to be, like, one of the most ruthless pirates out there. And again, he was manipulated by, uh, you know, the heirloom, the piece of Nezirak that so that was yeah. the hatred, right? So he was consumed by that. Um, so that definitely clouded his judgment. But, you know, he's done everything to be, uh, to you know, what's the word? Repentant for it, you know? Yeah, he's make, like trying to make up for the shit he's done. Right, and I, I think he's done done so tremendously. He, I mean, he, There's another Fallen that did the same thing. He's on Europa. He's got three arms right now. Yeah, well... But Varix? Yeah. He's he's doing the exact same thing Mithrax is. They're all doing it. They're all creeping around. Varix is trying to make up for the fact that he was the one that got <laughs> K6 killed. He's now acting as like Varix the, the is responsible of like, Europa. <laughs> like he may he may not have like fired. How the different gun? would the story go if we, we actually were a bit more ruthless? We killed off Varix. If we killed off Mithrax. Don't give them second chances. Just put a bullet in their head and move on. Just get, I, just get the lore out. <laughs> I mean, Varric said and fired a gun, but he put he the, sure as hell held the trigger. He or, I, or he put the bullet in the gun, dude, and wrote Cade's name on it. I mean, that was from from like days of Mafia old, where he's carving Cade Six's name into the bullet. <laughs> yeah, like, and then sent out a distress signal. I, I, I never quite got that story loop. Like Varric should have been more. I don't know what the word is. He was just reigning as the good guy. He was like, "Help me, Guardian! Help me! I'm stranded! Come on, Step Guardian! Come and help me!" And you're just like, "Oh, sure, let's just help you and just give you a fucking planet to yourself." Yeah, and then how come he's not back in the fold of Marisov? Is because like he's no longer like <clears throat> the Elixni and what house does she control? I want to say House of Wolves, right? I don't know. Was it the yeah, House of Wolves? Sound right? Yeah, the House of Wolves. Like, I guess that. I'm gonna look it up. You know, like how come like they're not part of like her Queen's Guard or her reign anymore? I, I don't know. I, maybe if someone with more of a lore mind can break that down. But um, yeah. I but just to circle back. Aramis making that House point. House of Judgment. He was part of House of Judgment. Right. Okay. House of Judgment. He was um he's actually the last known living surviving member, apparently. Yeah, but of I that thought house. like there was another house that was part of like her the reef. That was he like, appears in the House of Wolves, but I think he's always been aligned with the House of Judgment. Okay. He abandoned the Awoken and reformed the House of Judgment with himself as the leader um, during the Reef Wars. Because of Skolas's brutality, he is the last known living survivor, and his upper arm was ripped off. So he abandoned the Kel to join the Reef under the House of Wolves. But after the House of Wolves rebelled against the Queen, he remained loyal to Marisov, and then has gone back to reform. The House of um, House of Judgment, uh, to which he is the last living member. Well, he's yeah. had it rough as well. Then bless him. Yeah, he's had he's had it rough. But I just I, just to circle back, I just thought it was you know what Aramis said, um, because she's going to play another part. I honestly of, feel, of course, she is. I, I honestly, let me just make this one point. I honestly feel that as you see like there's been a lot of like coalition building like humanity is working with the cabal now their title working with the elixni misrax right i i, I think the final shape i think everything is going to kind of like fall to pieces 
and then get reconstructed again as the final shape. I don't think we keep our allegiances with, uh, with 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 uh, with Keitel. I, I I think Misrax in his in the House of Light leave the last city. I I just don't see the whole peace, love, kumbaya thing, like being a thing as we move forward. Like. It's difficult to swallow as well, isn't it? Because you think Destiny's been out since, what, 2013? We're now, you know, 2023. We've been murdering Cabal, Hive, and Fallen by the dozen, you know, killing off Tanix, killing off Oryx, killing off Crota, killing off Omnigal, you know, killing off Valus Turok, killing off Dominus Ghoul, killing off um, fucking... Keidel's father, uh, Callus. Yes. Name forgave me that. You know, we've been murdering houses and <laughs> loyalists and everything for, for years. <laughs> and, you know, suddenly we're all going to sit in the tower and sing Kumbaya and, you know, eat marshmallows over the fire. I just can't see like, it happening. It's, it's a great Especially when the witness comes. It's, it's a great story beat and how, you know, different cultures come together. Like, that's, that's, fantastic but i think overall you know it's it's getting awfully crowded here in the west city you know there's also a lot of bad blood it's it's I getting mean... awfully crowded in like you know the the get in in soul right i think something's going to happen where people start pointing fingers at each other i think there's some more trickery coming whether it's part zavathun whether it's part witness whether it's like attacks from Ziva Waira, whether it's, you know, what's Vex manipulation, who knows what it is, right? Not thinking too far in ahead, but from like a story perspective as we are right now, we can honestly say the witness holds all the cards. Like we've lost Holiday, the Traveler's compromised, we've seen his power. He was able to destroy three three ghosts at the wave of a hand and just obliterate three ships and thread them apart like they're nothing. You know, what's to say that Mithrax is like, you know, had that line from Ky um, from Aramis and just think, wait, I'm on the losing side here. Like, after what we've witnessed, we're trying to manpower everything, but we're still losing. We're still getting our asses kicked left, right, and central. The same for Kyle. You know, she needs to look out for her and her legion. And, you know, the same for Mithrax and Ido. Now, if I if I had a daughter that was part of Light versus Dark, did I want her to be on the losing side? I'd be sucking up to the witness, be like, "Hey, yo, I'm your buddy. Yeah. I got inside information. Let me tell you." Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I think there's going to be a coming apart of the coalition that we have. There's going to be a lot of question marks, and I think just like every every like great narrative has those type of elements to it. Right. And we've already seen the passing of Amanda. I think we'll. I'd be surprised. It's not the end. I'd be Fact surprised speaking, if we don't see end. another passing of another character. Right. Like it would almost be like poetic. Right. Where let's just say someone like Devram K passes away. Oh, I'd, I'd be sad if he, he finally dies. I'm just after using Devram his... as an example. No, 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 no. Right. But... I, I really can't like think of any like reason why he would be knocked off but let's just just using him right but it's well, Amanda who gets res and Devrim doesn't get res right so it's like and then and then that, that'll be a great debate well how come Amanda gets res but Devrim doesn't not Devrim you know what I mean like that'll just be like a, a future conversation and, and it'll be poetic in a sense where not everybody does get res and then that'll lead to the question well what determines who gets res and who doesn't it sets like a benchmark doesn't it like why does she get picked over him or why does he get picked over her you know and another lord guardian council clan member and leader on the discord and finney hertz who was also on the show uh on the inaugural zero hour we had this discussion the other day and you know he concluded that when all those that are risen have most likely, and it 
all everything points towards having a sordid past. Like not necessarily that you were like a criminal, but there was some type of sordidness. There was some type of I don't even want to say like evil, but there was something that perhaps you needed to make amends for while you were actual living and then being res as a guardian is your opportunity to like make amends for the rest of your life that'd be an that'd be an interesting concept like if you have regrets because of something you've done or like the actions you've done and that's the reason why you get a second chance right that'd be interesting but if you take that standpoint right if you take that line of thought then you would conclude that Amanda would not be res because there's really nothing in her past that she needs to make amends for. Right? Like she's never done anything as like a villain or anything that's like chaotic. She's always lived like a true, you know. Oh, warm, so it's then when where do you draw the line on what you consider yeah, um right? to make amends for or to um like regrets for example because obviously the reason why crow got resurrected was because he regretted killing cade and then that's the reason why he's been given a second chance as like a hunter vanguard or a hunter guardian right to to make amends for that what has amanda then, done like amanda like basically she she's lived her life without fault right like but what if she regrets something that we don't know about because we know her backstory we know about you know her parents we know about how <laughs> zavala took her in as a child all right she's well that's forever, all that we got that's all that we got. But is she's that forever in his debt. So what if what if she regrets not being able to help finish it? You know, help see through the. But that's but not you the see same. I mean? like, that's not you, the same you, as Aldrin you... killing Cade and having to like make amends for that. Oh, the rest no, of no, no. Life, but it's not know, necessarily like... about having to make amends. He regrets it. I mean, he's now making amends because he's got a second chance. But the reason why he got the second chance is because he regrets doing it in the first place. Yeah, but like everyone has regrets, but that, you know, so you're saying. Reg- so it's where, it's where you draw the line on the narrative. It's a case of do we leave it as if you regret something, you get a second chance, or is it you have to do something inherently evil to then get the light? And if that's the case, we're no different than the witness. Okay. I just don't think so, Am- Amanda has, the, like, if you take whether it be regret or something villainous, I don't think Amanda has done anything for the course of her life where she can check either of those boxes to say okay you're you're gonna get res and then why does Zavathun get the light and it's 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 a case of like you said like well Zavathun has the ultimate villainous check mark right because she's lived a life of murder right to satisfy and she repents at the end to get the ghost but like now she's got the light and she used it for evil so why would they resurrect her she hasn't done anything well she... to make up for her past she basically got the light and continued doing the same well, thing you she, mentioned she... it vp you mentioned it she used the light to set up protecting the traveler from the witness it may not have been what we wanted to do to protect the traveler but if she if 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 we failed in her ritual the traveler would have been uh, consumed within her ascendant plane, and the witness would not have been able to gain access. To it, most likely, and then hence the traveler would not have been compromised by the witness. If so it's was- not a case of what we think is making up for it. It's based off. Okay, so then how? <laughs> it- so the traveler thinks it's for the for his own good, its own good, their own good. That Savathun hides it away. We've obviously stopped that. I think the traveler does whatever it can to maintain. To I'm trying to find the balance to, like, to, you to know, maintain between... its part in the balance of light versus dark, which is what I think. And this is pretty a good segue of what the veil is, right? Like. The Traveler isn't about consuming the darkness, nor as the darkness should be about consuming the light. It's about maintaining their station and maintaining the balance. Because that's what harmony in the universe is. It's light and dark. And when there's more of one than the other, that's when things get out of whack. And I think 
the traveler as like its sentient self realizes that in order to maintain the balance maybe there's too much light and by giving someone like as villainous zavathun access to the light even like using the light can be something that gives the darkness an edge brings them closer and brings them more in line with balance with each other if that makes sense. and i think even the darkness work, works the same way the darkness gives the guardians access right even though well, like, I was going to say that we can use like stasis now, for example, we can which use is stasis obviously something... and strand for, you know, I still consider strand the darkness subclass. It is, it is, I think technically it's counted as a darkness subclass, it but should, it's, it should, it should, right? It's kind of its own thing. I, I mean, like stasis is, is naturally dark because that comes directly from the pyramid. Whereas this more of a case of they're trying to sell it as like the ebb and flow of the universe. So like, they're saying like all oh, the universe is made up of these little strands and then you can manipulate that to manipulate the universe to then bend it to your will to then use it as a power a bit similar to like um dr strange from like the marvel universe where you can like manipulate things to create things basically <clears throat> but it's not it's not a pyramid power it's not inherently dark yeah but i think strand works on like the physics that darkness is comprised of you know yeah, uh, I understand that. Our I mean, it's not, it's not and solar are like the, the physics that the light is comprised of. Like that, that's how I look at it. That makes sense, right? Um, and like the pyramid ships are the pyramid ships manifested by the darkness, or are they manifested by the witness as an agent of the dark? I right. think they are their own entity. They're controlled by themselves. I think. Oh, I've done this recently. If you remember the the mission in Witch Queen where you're fighting the radio jammers with the cabal, yeah, and you've got the Dominus Gaul looking uh, centurion like halfway through the mission, yeah, and they're talking about pyramid ships, and then they, there's like a line in there that says something like, "Who do you think flies them?" And then it goes off to say like, "I don't think anyone flies them; they fly themselves." So I think they're their own. I don't think anything specifically controls it, but whether the the witness like has overall control of like where it goes and how it goes, okay, or if it's just its own entity, it makes sense for the witness to be able to control it because the the pyramid in um the moon is directly linked to Nezarak and the witness because Nezarak's body was found in the pyramid in the moon uh, during the the Shadow Keep era. Okay. I'm I'm just trying to kind of So with with all of these points that we raised, I think a good way to conclude it is we're going to get one hell of a cliffhanger going into the final shape. And, oh, it's going to be exciting. And <laughs> what and what we were just able to discuss here over the last 30 minutes or so just came from experiencing the first season of the lightfall expansion season of the right Fox. we still potentially have 10 more months of story <laughs> right so like you know so i mean big ups to bungie and the narrative team for putting this content out because this type of discussions is like it's is are, are great to have you know they're super healthy for the community they're fun very engaging and like we're just getting started with that it's amazing how i've never really been one for pre-ordering things or buying things like I, I normally like to let other people buy something and then i'll test it and i'll be like oh, i'm not sure about that or actually i like that or if it's something i've previously experienced and it's been ended on a cliffhanger and i'm like i definitely need this next thing you know i'll buy it and i didn't really feel that way uh, with lightfall to begin with but then they did the they did like the announcement, like the big announcement on their Twitch, where they live streamed the whole revealing of Lightfall to the community. And as soon as they was like, it's available for pre-order, I'm like, I'm spending 80 quid on that right now and getting everything because yeah. it looked amazing. 
Yeah. And I was super excited about it because that happened months before Life 4 even dropped. So I had this on pre-order probably since like September, October, November time. Like, and then February time came around and it didn't disappoint. Like I know, I know it's got a lot of negative or mixed reviews, but for me, my opinion and for what I expected and my expectations, it's fully cleared it. I loved it. I, I've loved the campaign. The campaign was amazing. Strands worked really well. The new raid has hit off amazing. I mean, it's a little bit on the easy side again, my opinion, in terms of the contrast from completions, et cetera, et cetera. But even now, I mean, it's still, I still think it needs a little bit of work. Um, it's not, it's not ideal. I know Master's content has just come out and it's just like a, let's add more champions, a bit similar to like Vara Disciple. Um, you know, the first encounter, you get three barrier champions instead of one. And it's like, okay, but it doesn't necessarily make the content harder. You're just flooding it with champions. It doesn't make the sense. Um, and it's bugged as well at the moment, which is it's a bit of a, a bit of a down, like downhearted feeling. Um, if those who don't know, but the second encounter, uh, the challenge where you've got to shoot the opposite nut to go across to activate the nodes that's currently bugged on the second floor it's a 50 50 chance of whether it will fail the challenge or not even if you're doing it right by the mechanics um one of the teams that i play with they were in there for four and a half hours last night to try and get the master challenge done and it's like okay but things like that let it down a little bit yeah. but mm. in the grand balance of things i've loved the campaign and the seasonal story the first time we've had a war on two fronts i think has gone off really well and you know, like you said, to, to Bungie's credit and to the point, you know, to be able to have these type of conversations three, four, five, six weeks into a story of a DLC drop, it's incredible. Well, let me tell you this, because the way you just started this segment here in regards to let me see the trailer, let me see the release, let me see what the price points are, like, I think that I think that's a, that's that's one thing I wanted to elaborate on, okay? And then you also mentioned like the master raid that came out. I definitely want to talk about that afterwards, right? Sure. But online culture, gaming culture, it's I I think you go two ways as a consumer, right? Like you're the take my money meme, right? Like I'm on board, <laughs> I'm a Destiny take it, fan, take boy, fan, right? Right? Take my money, right? And like you're pre-ordering in September, October, late fall, like we did, and it's all good, right? And then you have people that, well, I'm skeptical. Like, I like Destiny Universe, but, you know, I don't know if I'm, is it, is it worth paying for the expansion, right? Should I let it come out and wait and see and, you know, read the reviews, right? And then when it does come out and then people try to justify the the dollar amount it costs to play the content. So there's two things I want to talk Basically, I want to talk about money, Panther. This is what I want to talk <laughs> about, all right? Because, Show me the money. <laughs> because I, what people fail to realize, what gamers fail, fail to realize, what the community fails to realize and understand and like absorb and ultimately accept is that Bungie is a business, right? And the number one objective of all businesses is to turn a profit. Because if you're not a profitable business, you're not going to be able to succeed and continue putting out the product and services that you do, right? Like that's just business 101. That's a fundamental fact. But in the video game world, in the online gaming culture world, I think we're so into just give me the final product, let me critique that, I enjoy playing it. You, you can't you can't see like the forest from the trees. You know what I'm saying? And you kind of just get stuck on one thing and you don't see the big picture. And the big picture is is that Bungie is a business. They have thousands of employees they're triple a studio and yes there's a they're in bed with sony now they're they're basically a subsidiary of sony they're there's billions of dollars flying around right why is this so expensive for me to the the 
why is why do I have to pay for this and why do I have to pay for that? And I'm going to let you answer, but I just want to make two points. And I'm going to reiterate what I originally said. It's a business. They're here to make money. Their marketing team, even before they got in bed with Sony, uh, understands what the price point is for them to put out that type of content. Right? Like they're not, they're not putting out an ex. Uh, they're not putting a price tag on a year long expansion that is, you know, way above beyond what like the average price would be for a life service game. And let's be honest. There's no other game out there like Destiny. So for all intents, all intents and purposes, uh, Bungie can like put a price, whatever price tag they want on. Right? But if you actually look at the price, and I'm not going to sit here and go through all the math. I'll let all the kids do the homework themselves. But here's the quick math. If you get the full Lightfall expansion, right, Digital Deluxe Edition, right, and you you and you're a Destiny player, and this is your main game. We're talking cents on the dollar per day for you to absorb and play all the content. All right? Cents on the dollar. Right? Now, I'm just talking about paying for the game. There's some other issues I'm going to bring up, but here's the question to you. Right? Is, are the, is Destiny overpriced? Yes or no? I don't think so. Again, this is just my opinion before people shoot me. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but for, for value for money, so you said there's no other game like Destiny. I mean, in terms of the MMO branch that it falls in, no, but there are MMOs out there. There loads are of MMOs. Them. And look at all of them. They're all paid services, paid subscription. You've got to pay like $30 a month or whatever, or you know, £30 a month, depending on your currency. Yeah. Um, you got to pay that for 12, for 12 months. I won't do the math, but obviously, you know, for those who are out there, you're, you're pretty smart. We're paying 80 quid in the UK for a year's worth of expansion, four seasons. So that's, you know, the, the whole year's seasons, which themselves cost, you know, 10, 15 quid each. You get two dungeons, which again, cost, you know, 15, 20 quid each. And you're getting the raid plus all the exotics, the armor, you know, any new reworks, etc. Um, on top of that, you're paying for it's not really Bungie's problem or your problem that you're paying for it, but you're paying for the server maintenance. You know, these servers are running 24 hours a day, seven, you know, seven days a week, 365 days a year. They have to be maintenanced. We make jokes about the servers. You know, as a community, we do. We, we can, we're we all guilty of it. You know, when the server goes down, you're like, oh. But, you know, as a Destiny player, I've sunk well over 6,000 hours into this game. Can I honestly say that a game that I've brought complete for 40 quid, have I sunk the same sort of hours into? Fuck no. I've played games like God of War, completed it once, and then that's it. Like, what's next? I go on to a different game. But a game that I repeatedly go to on a, on a daily basis for hours a day it's my safe haven i've played destiny since day one you know beta and alpha of course there's content uh content drought of course there's going to be times where you're a bit burnt out of course there's times where it's going to be slightly repetitive but you have to look at the good with the bad so you know they have had some bad moments they've had some horrendous blunders your servers have been off because of this that and the other and you know all sorts of other things I said about the master challenge being bugged. Okay, like there's little things, but as an overall, like an overall for you know what we've had for the last ten years plus, it's been fantastic, and I don't think anyone could really doubt that. Value for money wise, I think it's really good, and it's there or thereabouts. I mean, most games now to buy sixty, seventy quid, and then you'll play it like what once, twice, maybe three times if you really enjoy it, but that'll be it. How many games can you honestly say you go to on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, and spend thousands of hours in? There, there really is. There, there's very few games out there that people dump thousands of hours into over years of play and feel satisfied. And Destiny falls in that niche, right? And Destiny's unique in the sci-fi looter shooter genre right like there's it there's no competition out there in my opinion 
Right. For a community, it's only going to go one of two ways. You're either going to leave it as a, a free-to-play service, but you spend 80 quid on the DLC once a year, or you go pay to play. All right. But I can guarantee you... You said, you said the magic be... word, VP. You said the magic <laughs> word right there. Free to play. I want to get I want to get some like bingo alerts or something on my screen saying like winner jackpot. The magic I know. You know set. what? I gotta <laughs> man. Uh, this is this is this is why I suck, dude. So it's a kind of worm. I did. I I'm think I did you. promise you the last time you were on, but I'll promise you a second time. You maybe if a slew promises twice, I'll follow through on it. But I gotta finish setting up my stream deck because I'll have all sorts of cool stuff. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna get it done. I'm, I'm gonna. I was, I'm gonna I was just yanking your chain, by the way. I, I need my chain yanked. All right, and uh, I need to get the stream deck done because it'll be a lot more fun. Not just when I stream daily, but for the podcast. I promise you, I'm gonna make it well, while you're gone. But especially this week, I'm gonna make a dent. I'm gonna have at least half of this fucking board lit up. Uh, you know, next time. Hey. So back to back to my point though, like you're a, you're a Destiny player. You, I know that you can, you know, from our conversations, yeah, you played play Destiny one as an alpha, you know, a little bit. You play it here and there. Um, would you like it to go pay to play? Because I certainly wouldn't. As a as a consumer, as a person who plays Destiny, and certainly as a content creator, I ain't paying thirty quid a month to play something that I could have played for free and spend eighty quid a year on. No, I think the way I like the seasonal model. <laughs> Ever since they moved to it, I like the seasonal model. I like as a Destiny main, right? I like I like paying up front in in knowing that I don't have to think about it the rest of the year. For twelve months. That's it. You, you, you're done for twelve months. Right. There in if I want to invest more into Destiny, it's strictly gonna be on the cosmetic side, which I don't necessarily have to invest cash into right because through the eververse through the cash shop it does give me the opportunity to grind and earn bright dust to earn comparable if not the same items that are available for the almighty dollar now that's a separate conversation and we can touch on it i really don't want to go down that path because yeah i don't really want to go down that rabbit hole either <laughs> I, I, do, I don't want to really get into like you know make this like get the fire and pitchforks out against Eververse because like I prefaced this segment, Bungie is a business. As long as the game isn't pay to play, right? As far as progressing to get an edge inside of the game and or against another person on the PvP side, which it's not it's strictly cosmetic in the Eververse, which I'm fine with, right? But and also, uh, you said about touching on PvP as well. They've done loads of good work for that to make it so it doesn't feel pay to play as well. Like, you know, they've removed level disadvantages um, in things like Trials and Iron Banner and stuff. So the people that don't play it, you know, like us religiously five days a week, you know, hours a day. You know, they don't feel like they're being domed by someone like me who's at 1827 and they're at 1670, do you know what I mean? So, you know, they're doing work to level the playing field for everybody. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a quick screen share and I'm going to show you. As you go to Bungie.net, you go to their new player guide, you scroll down a little bit and it gives you, they're very transparent. It breaks down what's available as a free to play player. And then what do you get when you purchase? So free to play versus expansions. What can you do? Right? Destiny 2's base experience is a free to play game designed to offer a powerful taste of what it's like to be a space magic building, gun toting, energy saving. Here's a brief rundown of the two experiences that are. Here's what you can play when looking to hop on a Destiny 2 for free. Right? So all the playlist activities. Crucible, Gambit, Dang. Iron Banner, okay, which is now three times a month. 
which is a good change, by the way. It's for, a very good change, for my opinion. Yeah, it's 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 for the casuals too, so you don't have to like kill yourself. Uh, oh god, last season trying to get that fucking shader, I tried to reset my rank twice in two days. Fucking, yeah. it nearly killed me, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I was so mentally done You get access sure. to all the playlist activities, you get the seasonal events. So, Festival of the Lost, Dawning, and more, right? So, every season you get access to that. You got the Devs of Eternity, Prophecy Dungeon. So, you can hop in on the uh, Dares of Eternity, right? The prophecy dungeon, right? So you get that one dungeon. Raids, you have access to King's Fall and Vault of Glass, two of the classic iconic raids. Okay. And then patrols of public events and destination activities. So they don't really go into detail here, but from what I've read, there's a uh, I don't think you can do everything on each planet, but it's enough to kind of like, you know. So, some of the planets that are part of the campaigns that are uh, DLCs, like, um, like you're, you're uh, kind Forsaken, of, yeah. Shadowkeep, they're obviously, you know, DLC, so you have to buy the DLC. Yeah. But again, it's your prerogative. You don't necessarily need to do that. Right. Like, yeah, you're, you're, they give you a little taste of it, but you can't like explore everything. All right. So, if you're looking to maximize your time in this universe with the most amount of narrative impact, expansions are your best bet. Some expansions like Beyond Light brought gifts like Stasis, one of the subclass that you can access to harness incredible elemental powers. Other expansions like the Witch Queen offer not only a new level of challenge with the legendary campaign difficulty option, but a thrilling na narrative that casts Destiny lore in a new light, which we just spent an hour talking. So what's not available for free Destiny 2 players? So you can't do most of the raids and dungeons. You can only do the Prophecy, uh, King's Fall, and Vault of Glass. You can't do Trials, which is one thing that they implemented, I think, into Witch Queen because of all the cheaters, That's, right? That was going to say, the reason behind that was more for the benefit of the player base rather and, than an and actual that punishment. Was, and that was celebrated in the PvP community. Okay. So it was celebrated in every community. I don't even play trials, but you know, yeah. if you're going to make endgame PvP content and you're going to allow people to yeah. war hack through it, there's and no you point have to have the like most recent expansion to play trials too. It's not like you can't get Beyond Light and all of a sudden hop into trials. Yeah, um, so it's basically like you want you want to go into trials. You're gonna you need to buy everything. You need to buy the whole palette yeah. rather than just the appetizer. So free to play, you can't get the expansion storylines. That's the seasonal story missions, right? Uh, seasonal activities such as Season of Defiance mm -hmm. and exclusive exotic weapons and armor pieces along the way and other cosmetics. Yeah, which will be things like, you know, Quicksilver Storm and the likes of yeah. that. And then any of the Season Pass rewards. So, Bungie's a business, but if you look, like, this is If you a look lot. at the list of what you can do versus not do, this it... is a lot, man. You know? Yeah. Even if you just, let's say as an average Destiny player, let's say you just did the Pinnacles for Crucible, Gambit, and Night Falls and Iron Banner when it's on three times a season, that's enough in itself to keep you busy. Let alone adding in things like Deus of Eternity, Prophecy, King's Fall, Vault of Glass when they're on rotation. And this is where you go for that information if anybody wants to check. Go to Bungie.net, new players, and just type in this will pop right up. New and returning player. Speaking of um, speaking of new players, I've had the experience of what it's like to be a new guardian recently. If you want to touch on that subject, yeah, go for it. Um, so for those in my community who are in um, Sloop's podcast, you'll know I have a ten-year-old stepson, and one of my um, members of my community, Fluffy Master, in who's interacted with you before, Sloop, uh, Hunting Cat, he suggested for me to take my ten-year-old stepson through uh, a raid. Uh, we decided Vol Glass would probably be the easiest one to do. Um, he was with me all over the Easter weekend up till Wednesday. So we set up a, set him up an account on Friday. Um, and we took him through the raid on 
Monday. So he was a new light basically for three days. Um, it's brutal being a new light. <laughs> I feel sorry for those coming into the game. Um, so I recently found out that you start as Guardian rank one. And for those of you who uh, do not know what that means for you, um, it means that your power level starts off at 1600. You can't apply any armor mods or weapon mods. So for those of us who are experienced Destiny players using, you know, builds with ashes to assets and bolstering detonation, elemental charges, boss spec, big adept, big ones, and all the other stuff, you forget all of that until you get to rank six. To get to rank six, you need to complete the introduction mission. Uh, that's the new one that they implemented when they sunset the the Red War campaign is the, the one where you start on the Cosmodrome, similar to the original Destiny one. Um, you've got to do the Risk Runner campaign. You've got to do um, leveling up your armor, masterworking your armor, getting an enhancement prism. Um, in the same time as well, you've only got one version of your super and one fragment and one aspect, and that's it. Everything else is locked to a core array for 25,000 glimmer apiece. For those who want to unlock it so it's uh it was a tough old grind i i sort of looked at it in a in a new light um no pun intended no pun intended you know, being, yes <laughs> being being 1827 for the season with everything unlocked and all the builds available and there's me trying to set my stepson up to try and do a raid with blue weapons no armor mods and basically like a nova bomb with the basic fragments and aspects it was a it was a struggle. What was um, the power level? When I took him through, I think like seventeen twenty. We got him to in the end. We managed to get him through uh, most of the Lightfall campaign, most of the Witch Queen uh, campaign, and me being the good stepfather, uh, I got him to Guardian rank six when I couldn't sleep one night because of my headaches. So I was up for five and a half hours getting him from Guardian rank one to Guardian rank six and setting up a couple builds for him. <laughs> Um, for those of you who want to see the chaos, it is available on my YouTube channel, uh, just Venomous Panther 797 It's uh, not been something that's been put through Twitch, um, just because I wasn't sure of Twitch's terms of services. They say no one under the age of 13 is allowed to, to stream on the channel, so I went directly through YouTube for that one. Okay, well, what I can do is, when I when I post this on YouTube, I will uh, I'll put a link to that. Uh, thank you. Um, it was an experience. Uh, he managed to get Vex on his first clear, first and only clear. Yeah, we got a uh, first time in chat here. Uh, Stravagan Sunflower. I still can't believe VP Stepson got Vex first time during VOG. Yeah, um, if if you're interested, he uh, he killed one enemy for the entire Atheon damage phase and did 50k damage in total to the boss. <laughs> What? <laughs> so he not only did he get his first clear, he killed one enemy, just one, one ad in the entire damage phase, and did fifty thousand damage to the boss and got vex. Bungie was like, "Here you go, new light. Have a gun." I'll tell you what. It took me over seventy clears to get the vex. Thirty-five. Fast, okay. And for your, I've had nearly a hundred clears for your in that rat, to go through it in that fashion and get it drop one i'm i'm, I'm very happy i'm very happy for for both of you you sound happy it's not the word i would use <laughs> lucky little shit <laughs> no i am i am because i'm still on a high because after completing ron last night with uh lord guardian council i got conditional finality to uh to drop. Uh, i still haven't got that but i'm not worried about it i want the um so I want the chess piece bully for me. The <laughs> so I'm I've super done, stoked. I've done something like 20 odd plus clears in that raid now. Uh, basically all looted clears apart from one or two. And I still haven't got the chess piece for the warlock. It's the only piece I'm missing, and it's the only one I actually want. That's right. Yeah, I, I got that it's fairly the way. early. Yeah, I got that fairly early. And I got the exotic. Um and it was like one o'clock in the morning when we finished a raid because we started late and i went into uh a legend battlegrounds with it and just well let me see what this can do and it's 
I can't wait to use it more. Like the guns for real, you know? Um, and I can't yeah, wait to Yeah, there's been some pretty good reviews for it. Yeah, like it was in Battlegrounds on Legend, it, it was doing work. Like I had no fear, you know? Um, and like how it procs the ignitions, you see it right away on top of the freeze. Like it's, it's a very cool weapon. Very cool. So. I mean, speaking of builds, not, not that this is something I put in the, um, in the thing that we'll talk about in the subject thing, but, um, I've just reworked my Hunter to have a couple of new builds for, for Strand, Solar, uh, Void and Arc. And, um, I've got a really juicy Arc one at the moment using, uh, the Assassin's Cow, where you get, um, powered, um, final blows with your melee, grant you invisibility. Um, mix that with combination flow and lethal current, and you just become a titan in a hunter body, man. It's disgusting. I yep. was doing a uh, a legendary battleground with that build, and I was just punching everything in sight and just killing everything. But obviously, because it gives you the survivability, the health back for the enemies you kill, it was just like having classy restoration all over again, where you're just basically invincible going yeah. around punching things. It was great. Before they did the not to get too off track, but before they did the the patch or the reduction in like add hit points for the exotic Avalon node mission, that that Assassin's Cal build is what got me through solo on Legend uh, my first time. No, I'm glad you know of it. Then there's not new yeah. news for you, but yeah, oh, uh... I, I felt I felt like a god. I was doing it earlier and. Um... Like it, Spire and stuff as well with Percy and just yeah. slapping everything. Because I've always been a, a, a liar's handshake, but then I decided to try Assassin's Cow. Lies. And Assassin's Cow, with the current sandbox and the way the mod systems work, um, and just like the way the exotic pairs with Arc 3.0 is just more sensical. So, yeah. Um, that's we that. should enjoy it while we last. Mentioning sandbox, we've got a we got a big update coming soon. We got a big update. We're gonna t we're gonna touch on that, but I just wanted to come full circle here because sure. the point that I'm making with this segment is Bungie can charge a lot more for their product than they don't. Right? If you are a Destiny main and you buy the expansion, you're talking cents on the dollar. For the amount of content and satisfaction that you get in a live service game right that's constantly evolving okay but that's not to say that a free-to-play player doesn't like scratch their head right now one thing that a free-to-play player cannot do right is truly take advantage of the flex factor when it comes to guardian ranks because based upon the free-to-play model and what's available to you, you can only progress to rank six, right? In order to get to rank yeah. seven and beyond, you have to purchase the expansion. So the question is remains, is Destiny 2 progression locked behind a paywall? And the answer is yes, there is a paywall, right? As a free-to-play yes. player, you can't go beyond certain things or have access to unless you pay but is it a paywall yes but it's not a paywall because Bungie's like no we don't want to give it to you because they're a fucking business right and this is the product that they put out so if you want further access to their product and their service you need to pay them correct to counter that though okay. I, to, to counter the point though it's it's not a paywall if you think about it. I pay for uh, the Lightfall expansion on a on a yearly well, basis. To progress in the Guardian the rank days. system, there is a paywall. But you can't. You can't. Do you want to progress in the Guardian rank system? I'm just saying for the flex, dude. Like I'm, I'm bringing this up because if I, I'd say that, but it's a very very niche market. I'm uh, sorry, but no free to play player. I mean, I'm a paying just, player, and I don't give a, I don't give two monkeys if I get to rank eleven. Hey, <laughs> I'm not losing sleep over it, but for 
I know I know at least one Guardian's losing sleep over it, right? I'm, I'm because, gonna say if okay if you're a Guardian who's worried about getting to rank eleven and worried about a paywall, I think you need to reevaluate yourself in the mirror because if you wanna get to rank eleven, you know there's a paywall. If yeah. you wanna stay at rank six like everyone else, because I'm telling you now in seventy days when you grind to rank eleven, it's gonna get reset back to rank six and you're gonna be just as pissed as everyone else is. Well, they did make that change. It'll still reflect what your highest rank is, but in game, you're to to progress even higher. You have to start below again and then go back up. But like, let's say you end this season at rank nine, right? You'll still be rank nine, shown to other guardians. You can still flex rank nine in season twenty one, but you have to go seven, eight, nine, ten in season twenty one to get that uptick in ten. You know what I'm saying? I mean, for me, I I already spend enough hours grinding and helping other people and everything yes, else, and but, power level as well. Like, I'm unless just... they change it so that power level is no longer a thing and it's guardian ranks, it will become viable. But at this moment in time, it's very new. It's very just introduced, and I just I don't see the viability of being a rank eleven. It's not going to do anything for my it's, ego. It's, it's not going to do anything it's just for anyone else's it's, ego. It's a flex, and I'll be honest with you. Like, I see some guardians out there with ranks, and I'm like. I don't even know why you are. How are you in that rank? You know what I mean? Unless you're just having like, just off saying, session. Like, I don't understand. You yourself, you're... you yourself have way, way more better flex than someone who's a guardian rank nine. You could go flawless in trials. If you want to really flex something, flex a KD, yeah. flex how many raids you've completed, flex how many people you've sherped through the game. Yeah. If you're going to flex something like rank 11, which I can do in like three days if I didn't want to sleep. Yeah. I don't, I don't care about that. You ain't flexing that on nobody. Right. Right. Like, it's I think it's a flex as far as progression in the game. I don't necessarily feel it's a flex that's reflective of like your skill in the game. Right? That's that's the point, is that people are taking it as it's your skill. I, I saw a post, I, I kid you not, this is I mean, this is a very new system, you know yourself. Somebody legitimately said to somebody, I'm a rank eight, you're a rank six, you shut up when I talk. Stravic Sunflower says it's the same kind of flex as players who before guardian rank reach seasonal rank 500 plus. Yeah. And that was just it's, from it's basically chilling, in a, chilling in a lost sector. You know what I yeah, mean? Macro farming, macro farming, AFK farming. Yeah. Like there's like, a hole in King's fault. If anyone's interested, by the way, if you want, still want to macro farm and be rank a thousand for the season, no, no, just go touch no, grass. No, no, thank you. <laughs> I'd rather drive 20 miles to eat Popeye's than uh, do that. Um, but I, I haven't I, heard of I haven't had Popeyes. I've heard of it. Is it well, good? Actually, I bring Sorry, that up because on stream uh, yesterday, this this kid was like, he goes, I go, how you living, man? He's like, I'm doing good, right? I was helping him through a master nightfall, and he's just like, man, he's like, I just had a a great day. He goes, I just drove twenty miles. I forget. I don't know what they sold like hot chicken or something he goes i just drove 20 miles to popeyes for some hot chicken and it's like i'm i'm loving life right now i'm like you drove 20 miles to go to popeyes he's like yeah he's like it wasn't just me he goes i got a group of people there's like eight of us i'm like so road, i'm like so road trip to popeyes 20 miles he's like yeah man he's like it was totally worth it i go okay and then yeah, good. and yeah and i was like hey that's all power to you man and i was like that was like my question of the day and i asked the other person on the fire team i'm like where what would you drive 20 miles for and he was like nothing <laughs> i'm like come <laughs> on man I'm like you got to pick something like what type of food would you drive 20 miles for? i think if i didn't have it locally i'd drive 20 miles for like a big mac or something but I mean, it's, it's it's everywhere, isn't it? So like, you know, for me, I think mine is like the grand Big Mac. If it was only available, so that like so that's areas. your that's your end game food purchase, a Big Mac for a twenty mile run. Yeah, man, it's something you don't eat it every day, do you? Like, it's like junk food. You don't really go for it every day. I mean, if the if it was like not available in my area, and you know, it was only available like once every once in a while, okay. I think a grand Big Mac for twenty miles, I'd do that easily. Okay. Or chicken nuggets. Everyone loves chicken nuggets. Okay. Um, but listen, not I digress. I I just wanted to bring that because we're in the free to play 
conversation. They 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 hit a paywall, right? Because, but it's not a paywall. There's such a negative connotation when you say paywall. It's just like there's only so much that the free to play experience offers them, which is a tremendous amount. And then there's like a contingent of free to play players that are saying, well, well, the paywall is in the guardian rank system, which they're making all these adjustments to which other people are flexing and here i am stuck at, stuck at rank six who who woe is me and to those people i say buy the expansion and then you can <laughs> like put pay, your money pay, where your mouth is like put, there's, there's an old saying the out table. there you, you get what you pay for right i like that one you get what you pay for uh and then you can ask me this question a million times is destiny ever price no if if Guardian ranks is the be all and end all, seriously, just spend the eighty pounds. It's not going to break the bank. You're going to get a year's long worth of maintenance, a year's long worth of expansions. You get your Guardian rank eleven, so you can flex it to your kids and your yeah. friends, and you know your other little people in the same position, and be like, hey, look, look what I can do. I can do all these raids and stuff. But realistically, the free to play players get a lot for yeah. what for what you pay, which is zero. You get access to all of the Vanguard strikes, all of the Gambit. Crucible, Iron Banner, raids of like Vault Glass and King's Fall in themselves are iconic to the Destiny community for those who played it in, you know, Destiny 1 and they brought it back and revamped it. Um, Prophecy Dungeon in itself was a great dungeon if you haven't cleared it already. I like that one. Yeah. And Sunflower just... says it in chat base game is basically an extended free trial demo to the game. Of course, that that that's what yeah, it's there. You don't you just don't pay for seven days. You can pay for however long you want. If you don't yeah. want to, you know, pay for an expansion, you can be a free to pay player for ten years if you want to. But yeah. you're and gonna actually, get caught by the Destiny. I took hook. it upon myself before the podcast. I went on to Reddit, right? Well, first I googled some things. Then I went on to Reddit, and I, man, some of the free to play chatter is it's so off the wall. I, I honestly think like if they're not children in these posting rooms like they had the mentality of children okay like some of like the accusations and angst towards bungie for not basically giving the game away for free uh how is how like, dare you in this it, day and age it, have is, people is pay for things it, it's, it's just absurd like i can't you know and i've been called out in some comments of some content that i that i've posted and like saying like you know because it, it just got to the point, like, in this one particular thread, I was like, look, if you're going to be condescending to me, like, just here's your opportunity to go off, but I'm, like, done with you, right? And I, cause I basically was like, if you got a problem, don't go off on me, man, right? Just because, like, I do the math and it costs me cents on the dollar per day after I buy the yearly expansion to enjoy what they, their product and their service. If I find value in cents on the dollar on a daily basis and you don't, if your value is like zero and like free, if that's that's like, a you issue, like that's that's a you issue, and like don't continue to go off and be rude and condescending to me. Go to Bungie; they have forums, and you can reach out to them and express your grievance. Right? I'm like, curious now. Sorry, because you keep saying like you know per day. I'm just going to do some calculations. Do the math. Do the math. So, so I on average play seven hours a day. No, take take that off. Don't don't even worry about uh time to cost ratio. Just look just do do the base math. So like what's the expansion? It's like a hundred dollars, right? Well it's, it's, it's yeah, eighty quid for us. All right, so eighty quid and just uh divide that by twelve and then divide that number by thirty. And that's what it costs per day. Here we go. 0 0.22 pence per day. Bingo. Cents on the dollar. Bear in mind, I play seven hours a day out of this as well. So that's 2,222 okay, so hours. Part. So like, in, it, so when it comes to investing, now there's like a time cost ratio, right? Like, I'm not going to start bringing in all my financial terms uh, and everything. But like, there's a, a there's there's a cost that's associated with your it's like a, a, a time cost evaluation 
when you decide to go down like a specific financial route. It could be anything. And then is this a short-term investment? Is this a long-term investment? So technically anything inside of 12 months is considered short-term. Anything outside of that is considered long-term. So really when you pay for an expansion, that's a short-term investment. But if you compound yeah. that year over year over year, the rate of return for the amount of hours that you put in as a destiny main, when empirically on a day-to-day -day basis, it's cents on the dollars, you're talking tenths, one hundredths, thousands of a cent per dollar on a daily basis yeah, for the amount it's minuscule. for the value and satisfaction that you get out of it. Right? And People rant. out there complaining for, for 0 0.22 pence per day. Now, now, not that I want to make this a whole money conversation, right? Well, my background is in finance. and I did do some math on like the other side of the pendulum because what is complete bullshit in regards to the bungee marketing and product model, in my opinion, right? And it is an opposition to what they're stated in the blog and TWAB this week. I don't remember if it was the blog or the TWAB. Go back and double check, but it was one of those. Where they talked about how they're uh, adjusting, further adjusting the accommodations, right? And adding a new accommodation, which is best dressed. Best dressed. All right. And everybody knows that, okay, and, they recently tweeted, show us your best fashion. They do that quite often, right? Everybody knows that Dresdeny fashion is the true end game, Destiny, right? They've had functionality in since Witch Queen it, started, <laughs> where you can like go HUDless on a click, right? And you can take pictures, right? They added the transmog system, right? But this is where. I prefaced everything by saying the business model is bullshit. And this is where I'm going to take the side of the free to play player mentality. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to be Mr. Johnny free to play player mentality, not for a free to play player, but that kind of like that mentality and be like, Bungie, damn you. Okay. Because this is where the greediness. <laughs> corporate greed right and the over evaluation of how they can get a rate of return comes into play okay now we'll never have access to this data we can only do the maths ourselves but if they haven't changed anything it's because of two reasons it's either a it's so fucking profitable for them like if it ain't broke don't fix it right or b there hasn't a is working and there just hasn't been enough opposition and constructive criticism and feedback from the community for them to implement the change. But yet they still are, they still like referring to fashion, which is kind of a slap in the face to the community. And this is how it's a slap in the face. It's a slap in the face because they want us to look our best. They want us to engage the transmog system. But what you get on a season-to-season -season basis is 10 opportunities per character to get a template, to get a synth board, right? Which comes to 30 per account. Now, considering that you have five armor slots, just throw the exotic out for a second, right? So that's basically two armor sets per class each season. Right? So that's two, four, six, eight, right? So that's eight armor sets per class every year. Okay. So absorb that, right? If you want to go beyond that in a season, the only option you have is in the cash shop, which is Eververse. There's no option for bright dust purchasing for a synth weave template you can only purchase them in bundles for silver right and i did do the math here okay 
so which side do I have it? Okay. Now, before you even purchase these template bundles, you have to get the silver, right? So how do you go about getting silver? So like I play on PlayStation, right? And the silver bundles are the same no matter where you go. You either get it's like I think the the it's like forty nine ninety nine. You get five thousand silver. The math breaks down the same for whether you get five hundred silver, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand. I think then the top the top bundle is five thousand silver. It basically comes down for every hundred silver that you have. It's about it's ninety nine cents. So we'll just round up. So a hundred silver equals a dollar U.S. Base mathematically. Okay. A synth weave template costs 300 silver. So that's $3 US. The other option for a synth weave template is you get five, right? So that's for 500 silver. So that's $10 US. So economically speaking, you're better off getting, if you want to get five templates, it's more cost effective to buy the bundle for 10 bucks than it is for three. But you're not spending dollars, you're spending silver. So remember, every hundred silver equals a dollar US. If it's 300 silver or one synth weave template, that's three bucks. If it's 500 silver or a template of five, it's $10 US. All right, absorb that now. If I, on my hunter, right, because that's the character I was playing earlier, just on my helmet slot, right, I have 105 items that I can transmog, okay? Now, let's just say I do all of my freebies for that character so I can get 10, synth cords right so that'll bring me to 95 items just on my helmet that i have yet to transmog and the only way that i could do that if i wanted to do it all today or this season is to purchase silver for these templates okay so with 95 items left to transmog out of the helmet slot okay if i'm buying um the template of five so 95 divided by five that's 19 you multiply that by 10 which is ten dollars per five dollar template per five template so that's 190 dollars us for me to complete all the transmogging on the helmet just for my hunt okay mod what you think about it Okay, now, if I wanted to get the rest of all the armor pieces transmogged for my hunter, okay, so that, br so that basically brings me back to the 105 uh, arms that I need to transmog, 105 chest pieces I yes. need to transmog, boots. 100 and class boots item. in the class item, okay, so... All of that, so that would be 21 times 10, that's 210, right? Times four other slots, so 210 times four other slots, that's $840 plus the 190 that I just did for my helmet, that's $1,030 after I use my 10 templates. $1,030 for me to transmog all of the armor pieces just for my hunter. Okay. And that would be three be like thousand three grand, three grand in total for three thousand and ninety dollars for all three characters. Add in the 80 quid DLC. <laughs> now that's bullshit. Okay. And I'm I'm a businessman. I support capitalistic endeavors, but when it comes to 
an insult that is this mathematics right here when you are also championing and promoting and be your best guardian, right? When you're lit, when you put when you put such a high price tag on the fashion game, and I'm not saying that they shouldn't charge you for it. Like, keep the math the same for the templates, right? But you got to give us more than 30 synth chords per account. That season. Right? Yeah. So here's the question for you. Right? I'll let you have the floor. What's the good number? How many armor sets per class is enough to kind of satisfy a guardian like me or someone else that's invested into the fashion game where I can kind of like get the new stuff, but also work on collecting the back end before I have to dip into my pocket or even dip into my pocket? It's a difficult question. I'd have to put myself in your shoes to begin with because I'm not really that bothered for fashion i mean i had a uh on my warlock i've got the trials set from two seasons ago uh that's what i'm currently rocking on that on my hunter i've got a combination of iron banner and trials that i've been rocking for like four seasons um the same with my titan i've got the uh i don't know if you know it, but like the 30th anniversary uh panther helmet obviously because of my name i've got it as a panther and then the rest of it's all pink so i call myself the pink panther that's trademarked I obviously can't use it for real life things but it's a pink panther if anyone's interested um i've not really been bothered about fashion um i've got a thing in my uh my twitch channel points where people can redeem it and customize my fashion and color my character whatever color they want and stuff but generally speaking i've never wholly gone out and gone oh do you know what? i need to make my character look like x y and blue today so from my perspective i didn't even know that that was a number <laughs> i was just like i get synth chords i don't know where i get them from i spend them occasionally if i need something if i don't need it they just stay locked you get 30 um, per account you have the, 10 per honestly character. i've been playing this game for 10 years didn't even know that was a thing and you acquire the synth chords by completing 801 bounties Bounties, yeah, and those so bounties how you can be completed in the Vanguard play, Vanguard Crucible Gambit Destination and Dungeon or, Raids. Or, or, dungeon Raid, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so I know I knew that bit, and but I didn't fine. know it was like, caps per season like, or whatever. But I think that's cool. Like that, it, it keeps the population going. Um, it, there's, there's a lot of good things. I'm not saying I don't I I I like I support the system, but what I don't support is that there should be it should more. Cost three, it shouldn't it, cost three thousand one hundred. It shouldn't be capped. To... It, sh it shouldn't be fucking capped, man. Right? Like, at the very least, double. Like, instead of me getting two, I should at least be able to get four sets per character every season. Right? At the at at the fucking minimum, bro. Right? At the minimum. It's it's and, hard for me to say. I'm, <laughs> and I sh if and to make it more economical, I should be able to use Bright Dust to purchase a template for five or three, just like I would silver, right? And whatever, man. Like, if you want to, like, if you really want to bend me over, make it like where it's 300 silver for one template, then maybe that's 3,000 bright dust, right? And then it's 500 silver. Because you'll, 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 you'll run out of bright dust eventually, so you'd have to spend more. If you're it, interested in the fashion it's 5, game, you'd 5,000, have... right? Now you're... Listen, and it's... And, like, light, like, true capitalism is about incentivizing people to do a thing, right? Incentivizing people. Like that's what it is, right? For you to turn a profit, and like, what this incentivizes me to do is tell the person that in 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 accounting and in merchandising and marketing to go fuck themselves. That's what incentivizes <laughs> me to do, okay? And it's a fucking insult. Um, to how how to, many to people, people do you think are actually spending that type of money on the on on well, the synth code? So. That, it can't that, be making that much of a profit for them. 
I mean, the numbers are crazy. Don't get me wrong. Like looking at maths and and the numbers, there's no lying. The it's, markup it's on crazy. fashion is through the fucking roof, dude. But the how many people are actually here is legitimately buying three thousand pounds worth of of synth cords? Well, here, Sunflower says, uh, "If I'm honest, I'm more into the shaders than the actual armor pieces. I think the shaders themselves can make a big difference to the sets." Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. And like, look. And those and those are free. Oh, all, all for for bright dust. Well, they're not all for yeah. They're the the best shaders are for bright dust, right? They're okay. not bending over for glimmer. Uh, not for glimmer for dollars but, on that one, which yeah. I'm thankful for because that would just be crazy. But but all shaders are obtainable. Uh, at, they're all obtainable in the game, right? Like you have to do the thing. And like certain shaders, like flawless and all that bullshit. Like, yes, like there's certain shaders you have to be like skilled and they should be reserved for completing those activities, right? Like, no one debates that, right? But it's like the shaders is like they augment the fashion, but they're not really the fashion. The fashion is in the actual armor, right? That so, on, use, on the subject of the, right? of the numbers, then. Like as a as an experience in finance, what, obviously you, you've done the math. I mean, the absolute Re rip off it is to go beyond Re thirty. Realistically, okay. how much of Bungie's profit do you think comes from those synth cords? That's not the point, though. The, the Bungie's profit is isn't generated from charging, uh, you know, Sloop Gaming fucking silver three thousand. Okay, <laughs> like. So. Which I haven't done, by the way. So don't at me, right? I'm just doing the to, fucking math here, right? To bring to bring back to your point, though, is like you said, there's going to be two options of why this is still a thing. A is making a lot of money, and they're just like you know bend them over the barrel, whatever. Or B, it's not been brought to their attention, or if in if any case, it's it's not been protested against. That's, but then, that's why if, I we, if we if we need more. If 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 we lean more towards B, the likelihood is is there's probably people a lot of people like me and you know uh, Strathing some flower and a couple of other people in the community that they don't really care about the the synth core thing. And to be, I'm I'm quite happy to live off thirty a, a a season because realistically, I'm not going to go and buy everything and unlock everything. I think it's more going to be aimed to completionists or people that need every single set of every single armor in the game that's ever existed. That's right. then when it's going to be become more of the issue. But, but what then about it's a precedent? very niche market. What about precedent though? Like you could take you take a game like Elder Scrolls Online, right? Like their transmog system is is fucking phenomenal, dude. Right? Like it's been such a long time since I played it, but once you break that, once you once you deconstruct the gear item that you get, it's available for you. Right, it's available for you to use, but every time you want to put it on your character, right, and like create like a like a template for your fashion, right, or like save a build, right, there's a cost, and every time you want to edit that, there's a cost for it. Not like a silver cost, but like an in-game currency cost that you have to earn by doing certain activities. And they're usually the more difficult activities, which incentivizes. So the solution, the solution here then would be to to, to not have it uh, as a pay for thing. Essentially, is it, it will be a case of. I'm saying no. Let's say double the number of synth cords per season. At so let's least, say let's go to at least let's go to you, go to so you can get five armor sets a season, or, or six, or seven, whatever the number is. But then remove the ability to buy the synth cords. Well, see, I again. As a businessman, I don't want to remove this revenue stream from Bungie, right? Like, I mean, they say it's a revenue stream. I, I, I'm finding it hard to digest and swallow that this is making them any form of revenue to the point of where it it's enough to warrant keeping it or fighting for it. Realistically, I mean, come on, no one's going to be spending three grand on on transmog stuff. Bro, and if I, they had can a make client, it a I have a system. client of mine that spent in one year twenty five grand on a fucking mobile game. Okay, you're dealing with some uh, <laughs> some rich people. He's very wealthy, right? But it, it doesn't matter. Like 
his net worth is irrelevant. It's his, it's, it's relevant to a point, but his, think of it like this, his discretionary income, right? Included 25,000 for him to specifically say on this mobile game, right? Which is just a bunch of repetitive bullshit or whatever. He found value and enjoyment, decided to take his discretionary income. In this case, it was 25,000 and invest it a fucking mobile game okay to get upgrades and all that bullshit okay i'm not gonna say what the name of the game is to jeopardize anything that could possibly happen to me down the line i love mobile games by the way so let's don't at me for that but i'm just making a point this is a twenty five thousand dollar investment from one individual into a mobile game so you take that mentality, someone who has discretionary income that may not have the net worth as example A, but based upon what their personal net worth is, you know, almost $3,100 to cap out their fashion game on all their so, characters. But then that's where you need to make the compromise. I'm all, I'm all for, you know, the debate and stuff. And I know you don't like it. I'm sorry. I'll say it again. I'm offensive though, because I don't care for the fashion. So obviously I'm just trying to put myself in that community's shoes but then if you're angry by it the mass whatever then as let's say i'm the business there has to be a compromise in the middle or a settlement or somewhere in the middle so we first take the root of the problem the root of the problem is is that the synth cords are capped at 30 per season so that's what three months four months i think a season is lasts about four months so you get a chance to get 30 60 90 so you get about 120 a year. So that will just about cover one of your five in your in your list. So like your no, helmets, you for get example. Ten so, cents yeah. per character on a yearly basis. Yeah. Okay. So then you said you don't want to remove the profit stream. Okay. So then like all right. They stay you need to find a listen, and listen, then... I got I gotta cut you off for one second. Joe's come out and say, and Luke Smith has said in the past, Bungie is a collector's game, right? But you I it's it is impossible for me to collect everything in the game if you're only allotting me a certain amount. Ten sets per character, thirty sets per season, right? 120 sets per year. Or I should say not sets, but pieces, right? That would that would be two, four, six, eight, ten, which would be ten sets per character each year. Like it's it would take me almost three years just to get to just, catch the, up. just to fill in the helmet. Just to fill in what I owe right now, what what I need to make up on my helmet for my hunter, not counting any any other new gear that comes out in those two and a half so, years. Which like, goes back to my original point is that you need to compromise somewhere in the middle to a satisfy the revenue stream if that that is a thing from this synth cord thing. So you need to find the value that's beneficial to you as a business and your consumers. But then also just double the free shit that they get per year on it. And that that's the solution. You could be like, okay, guys, we've heard your complaints. Let's say rather than having 10 sets per character per year, you can have 20 sets per character per year or 30 sets per character per year. And then reduce the, you know, the cost of the synth wave in the bright dust store. Because real realistically, it's not the moneymaker. It's there for people to fuck around with, you know, as a collector's thing or have a set of armor or, you know, to look good when they're mapping people with snipers on Twitch, you know, in PvP and Trials of Osiris. Realistically, it's not the be all and end all of content. And it won't Listen, it and, won't lose the I'm money to there, reduce. And I'm, and I'm with you there. And but you know, we're not sitting on the accountant, the marketing and the merchandising team. We don't know what, you know, Bungie's never gonna open up our books to us, right? But I think it's a safe <laughs> assumption that yeah, like even if they gave everything away for free, like the, the lights are still gonna stay on in the studio. Okay. Yeah. 
but like, it's not the be all or end all of content. It's like, the, I'm sure it's there's the a lot more money making. But it's just it's 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 unnerving to me, and it's it's it raises an eyebrow, right? That when they talk about when it when they're consciously being transparent and implementing changes, as you read in these blogs and these twabs week after week, Bungie isn't stupid. They're they're aware. And then when they go so far as to say, we're going to make accommodations specifically for fashion, because we know fashion is important to the community because everyone flexes on all social media is what their guardians look like. Like, I just did a campaign uh, with another clan member the other day. And then one thing I was like, I'm like, man, I love how you see like your character in the cutscene, and you got your sexy drip going on. It's like, it's like watching yourself like uh like on a tv show it's like watching your character like on the destiny show you know what i mean it's like that's what's awesome about it you know and like when you put that drip together and you see it all come together in the cutscene, like that's just like really cool i i dig that i value that there's a tremendous amount of people in the community that value that bungie knows that so if you know that then why is there this math right and why aren't you making the proper adjustments to give us more synth cord? Not for free. Like, I don't just don't give it to me. I still have to go through the bounty process. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I completely understand. Because like, you're like, going to get. Why aren't those changes being implemented? Of... That, that's what I want to know, right? That's what I want to know. Don't champion and herald fashion and yay, let me see it when you're limiting what I can do unless I open my wallet up. Just saying. Yeah, it definitely needs looking into. I, I can see your point 100%. Like I said, from my point, I, I, I've never really cared too much about fashion, but, you know, as a as an outsider looking in, the, the compromise here would be to just, you know, double the amount of synth cores available, maybe half the cost it's going to take to complete the sets, because 3,100 is a crazy number. Like I personally won't be spending three thousand one hundred for fashion. Yeah, I mean, and, yeah. and, and if I you're don't gonna have fa- if you're gonna brag about and that's just what I collected, fashion. which is I pretty much have everything. You know what I mean? So like, this is a representative number of like a hardcore player of your collection. Yeah, right. And I've been playing since year one. Okay, uh, Dave McDave, uh, just take the cap off of Ada bounties. It's so simple. Definitely won't cost yeah. them anything at all in lost revenue. BP touched on that, um, and I, I agree. I don't. I, I genuinely don't see this as the thing that's keeping the gas and electric in the building. I'm sorry, you. There's no way you can spin it to tell me there's there's people out there. There is probably people out there, but I'm telling you, a very 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 small minority is spending three thousand one hundred on synth cords. Um, you know. If anything, more likely the people that are buying the DLC on a regular basis every year is probably going to keep them more afloat than, you know, releasing the cap on bounties to Ada to give people synth cords. And then Sunflower commented, I would have thought a lot of their revenue came from people who collect figures that cost upwards of, I guess, 80 pounds plus. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. The collector's editions, you know, the ones with the moth and shit in it. It's like £120 UK money, so that's probably going to be somewhere in the region of 150 180 for you guys. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, it's... Um, and then uh, Dave McDave says again, well, then, and that's why VP's Titan looks like ass, because you don't care about your ass. Uh... Don't you diss the Pink Panther. It's been a it's been a staple in raids. Yeah. And then Dave <laughs> brings this up. Sony spent three billion on them. They ain't short of funds. So I have something to say about that because a lot a lot of the community a lot of a lot of outsiders will look at an acquisition of one company for, to another and they'll see like what the dollar amount is. Like it's not like it's not like Sony walked into uh bungee studios and then slid over a briefcase of three billion cash like that's not how the transactions work a lot of that is uh like forecasted like assets to be acquired down the road it's uh other investments that they have it's not like necessarily like 
the three billion isn't all liquid. That's that's all I'm saying. Yeah, right. I, I was about to I was about to say the same it's, thing. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not all liquid. It's not all, it's not all liquid, but it's still a shitload of money. Easily come and I, with, and I get what um, you're saying. The headquarters, for example, like the value of the building, you know, the offices, yeah. the studios, you know, the servers and stuff like that. They all count as I'm gonna I'm gonna digress. I'm sorry, but it counts as assets. So if you look into any business acquisition or any, um, you know, um, financial control side of things, the figure that they put out is not necessarily, like you said, the liquid side of things, but it could be um, non-liquid assets like buildings, cars, servers, PCs, staff. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. You know, I, I won't digress too much. You know, studios and shit no, like I that. That will all count as assets as well. So that will all come under the figure, and that's what the company's valued at by uh, you know someone who does the, the merger between the two companies. They'll evaluate the company based off its acqu um, acquisitions and assets and liquid acquisitions, um, and be like, well, this is the figure they'll need to pay you. You know, to buy your shares out to your company to control your company. And then Sunflower uh, also commented, one of the collectors for Lightfall cost almost 300 pounds. While we've uh, stopped on this subject point for a second, me and my child bladder is just going to go take a very quick piss. Yeah. I'll be back in about 30 seconds. Yeah, so uh, just take a quick break here. Wait till VP gets back. Uh, well, listen. Um, we still got a lot more to talk about, uh, for those of you, uh, in chat or lurking, um, if you have not yet had an opportunity to drop a kind follow to Sloop Gaming, either here on Twitch or subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, that would very much be appreciated. If you have yet to follow or subscribe Venomous Panther on his respective channels, uh, please go and do so. Spread the word, VP, uh, awesome person, great rate Sherpa, has a great community. Uh, both his and mine are you know, here to help. Really, when it comes down to any activity in Destiny 2, so uh, we each have our respective discords and all of our socials and all that good stuff. So run the gamut, do the clicking. All that support really goes a long way, and it's a free and kind way to help us out and continue doing what we do. So thank you in advance, and thank you if you have done so already. Um, but I'll tell you, the synth chord, like, I just want more options, you know? And you, you, can't, you can't go into each season when you're telling me per character, I'm only getting two free armor sets, right? <laughs> Because you, you, you'll get one from, like, they always give you one. Like, the armor set that you're given for the Queen's Guard for this season is probably one of the freshest, most exquisite free sets that they've given with the seasonal pass. Again, I'm paying for it, so it should be, it should look pretty good, right? But anything that you collect along the way, um, or let's say, like, the seasonal armor set, not not like the one that's given in the season pass as an ornament, right? But the seasonal armor itself, that you have to transmog separately. So if you like the way that looks, boom, that's one set. Uh, new raid came out. I want to get that set. Boom, that's the second set. And now you're done. Now you're forced to go, you know, to dip into your wallet. And, you know, if there's stuff you want to catch up on, you either pay for it with silver or you wait until next season, you know, uh, when you get the two freebies again. I don't know. Th to me, it's just it's just frustrating. I'm back, by the way. Sorry, I didn't want to talk over you. Oh, yeah, no. So, I think those are really good points, because I just wanted to kind of, because i just been hearing some chatter and stuff about the free-to-play. I just wanted to kind of break down what's available for FTP, what's available after you purchase, and then that's a kind of a good bridge into Bungie recognizing fashion and now making a specific accommodation for fashion. But if I want to expand my fashion, then I have to pay for it beyond what's offered through the synth cord bounties that are available, what we capped at 30 per account, E2 
each season. So I just wanted to raise those points up. Um, I guess what I what I want to talk about next is you know when you were first on here, you know I got your thoughts on Ron contest mode, the raid itself, but now like the communities, you know everyone everyone's running through Ron now, more or less, right? Everyone has a firm grip on the mechanics. Um, I know compared to where I was three, four weeks ago, like I'm very comfortable in Ron. I'm, I'm, I can do every role now, right? Actually, the only thing I haven't done in Ron is actually solo run in the first encounter. I've done everything else. I don't know. I think always because like when I raid like my kids with me or another clan member and they always like running in the first, so I'm like, whatever, I'll just kill ads and punch scion <laughs> kill the torment punch shit you know <laughs> just whatever tight and main forever but when now we last week the master version came out right now i'm actually gonna do the master uh well actually we've got another comment here from dave do you think it's more frustrating now because they brought back loads of sets like from trials and iron banner it does really feel like an oversight that you won't be able to use them. Yeah. So just to finish that, it's a great point. Like there's, even if they look, even if they didn't bring that back, right? Like even if you weren't able to go into like the archive sets, right? As a longstanding destiny player, even if you just been playing over the last year, there's so, there's so much that you are deconstruct. There's so much available that you can transmog it's just there's just not enough right but it is overwhelming like i feel overwhelmed because like looking at like a lot of trial stuff that i've don't have right i all the trials armor is phenomenal right now it's a grind constantly level up get the engrams and unlock them all like that's like a goal of mine at least this season and next season. It'll probably take me three seasons, but I want to unlock all the Trials armor for the past three years on all my characters. So that's one thing that I'm, like, a little goal of mine. But it's going to be, it's going to be a grind, you know? And it should be, but reward me for the grind and give me an opportunity to transmog more than, you know, two fucking sets per character every season. We've already said my piece on it, but since he typed that, <laughs> we're, we're going to get him worked up again, guys. Uh, yeah, I know. Don't get me worked up again, Dave. <laughs> Chat about something else. But um, yeah, the master raid. Tell me about it. I'm doing it tonight with the clan. I hear it's hard as fuck. It's worse than contest mode because you got the champions and it's, stuff, right? It's basically just every other master they've ever added into the raid, um, to the to the game. I mean, look at. Master Val the Disciple, Master Vogue, Master Spire, Master Duality. Bungie's idea of hard content right now, I'm going to get shot for saying this, please don't at me, forget you see my socials. Um, I kind of agree a little bit with the way that Salta Grepper was saying, is that the, the, the hard content doesn't feel as hard. And it's not that I agree with him on any scale or level there's a lot of nerfs that he talks about that i think are preposterous and i'll touch up on something that i found earlier that might be a leak for a nerf uh, but we'll digress that for now um but the the general ethos for hard content right now or grandmasters or you know master raids it's just let's whack a load of champions in there that'll be hard that'll be difficult but then you're not factoring into you know just alone from what we can do now so you know in the first encounter there's three barrier champs per raid and um, per wave. So uh, two barrier champs will spawn when you shoot the first node, and um, when you punch the scion to spawn the tormentor, and when you complete the node, you get a third barrier champion. And this is every single set of nodes you activate all the way through. You're going to get three barrier champions. <laughs> Does that make it harder? Not necessarily. With you know strand suspend, with anti barrier, with volatile rounds right now, you can melt those champions like it's butter and it wouldn't even bat an eyelid. We were doing the challenge mode last week, I think Thursday, um, you know, and we blitzed through it. 
we did like one or two wipes because we got our timing fucked up. But from the actual ads perspective, it wasn't that bad. We, you know, we ran warlocks, couple wells, and then you know, use volatile rounds to clear ads or add clearing weapons, suspend the champions if needs be. It was a cakewalk. But like the whole the whole ethos of you know if you're going to have end game content if people are going to complain about it being too easy don't just stick a load of champions in and call it master because there's champions in the original version it doesn't make any difference there what makes you think it's going to be different because you're 20 levels under people do grandmasters for a living people solo grandmasters for a living if champions were difficult that wouldn't be possible <laughs> yeah the, the one thing that really annoys me um, and really annoyed me this week, and I actually pulled out of a run for it, is that they've released this master, um, you know, they released the master raid, they've released the new challenge this week for, you know, Encounter 2, and it's fucked. You can't, like, it's it's literally RNG as to whether you're going to get the challenge done or not, and it's, you know, yes, there's paywalls for Guardian ranks, you know, yes, you can't get certain amount of synth chords and stuff like that but for me for uh, someone as like an end game player who works on like raid seals who works on like taking people through the raids and stuff you know if my experience is shit because the encounter's fucked you know if i'm going to take someone through a raid or help someone with like challenges or whatever or help them towards their raid seal you know i i, I try and explain to this person who doesn't understand it the same way as i do is oh by the way you may or may not get the challenge because you know it's a 50 50 chance if the floor works <laughs> but, so we did a ron run yesterday and we did decision challenge where you have to be opposite and shoot the node for the other person yeah to and you can't shoot you can't be in the air when you shoot it like there's there there's has to be some type of like invisible barrier that as soon as you cross it recognizes that you're not on the other side anymore because even if you're airborne and shoot it before you land it's still a challenge fail so yeah 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 you, you physically have to be on the opposite side of it. but the good thing is is that I... any, anybody can shoot it like the jumpers don't necessarily have to and what we no, so what so what our team did was the same as what you're probably going to say is we had the the two jumpers stand by the thing and you yeah. had two designated people to shoot the nuts on either that's side exactly and just keep going it that way. That's exactly yeah, what was, we did. Yeah, that's what we did as well. And um, yeah. I I get what they're trying to do. Okay, and and I, I know I said a bit of negative stuff, and that's you know it's because it's personally frustrating for me. But I get why they're trying to do it in a certain way as well, and certain mechanics a certain way, so that people don't just shat skate across or well skate across or strand themselves across the stuff. But they really need to isolate the man cannons specifically to the guardians that are going over. There's got to be some way they can code it in so that you know if you accidentally get booted by a scion as the shooter and you shoot the nut, it just fails the challenge. It's ridiculous that like. That's out of your control. It's not like you're the one jumping over using strand or whatever. Do you know what I mean? I I see both sides of the argument, but you know, as a whole, it's just it's really hot luck as to whether it works or it doesn't work. You know, we did yeah. some runs where we were doing it first try, and then we were doing some runs where we couldn't do it for an hour and a half and we couldn't figure out why it was, and we weren't stranding our ways across or well skating or shatter skating or trying to break the mechanics or cheese it. We were trying to do it legitimately as the way they've told us to do it, and yeah. it still failed. Well, the worst part for us was once we figured out what our strategy was, we would get to, like, we would clear, you know, we we cleared the first floor, and then both teams are lining up to advance to the second floor. And then... We'd say, okay, and like the timer hasn't started yet, so everyone's in position, butts against the pad, you know, we, and then I was the one to count down. I said, okay, we'll shoot on three. One, two, three, shoot. And it would be, everyone shoots at, at you know, shooting across, but only one team would actually fly up. For some reason, the one pad didn't work for the other team. And then the fucking encounter's dead. Right, because there's not enough time for someone to go across, shoot, and then get back. Like it's it's too convoluted and too like you're, you're fucked after that. Like you would have to be like immaculately perfect to recover to get up there. Like it it sucked, you know. So here's where the ship apart and me kicks in. So what our team did and what we figured out is we have two go up at a time, and then the people that go up shoot across downwards. 
So you have one shooter on each side, you shoot the opposite side to send both teams up, and then they would cross fire to the bottom ones that were left downstairs. Who were the two that you would time. send up? The runner and the cross shooter? And then the ad oh, clear? Just, uh, doesn't matter because by the time that they were all up anyway, the timer still didn't kick in. Or if it kicked in, it was like seconds, literally seconds, and okay. it wouldn't make any difference. Okay. Yeah. So we um, we thought about that, but then like it just worked out where, you know, I think it took us like fifteen or twenty wipes before we got it. Yeah. So uh, like I said, ours hit fine. It was just when we hit the second floor, it's like there's. I don't know, like an invisible ledge or something that someone stands on, and it always causes a wipe. I don't know what it is, but like no one that I remember was jumping. It's actually going to make me check the video now because I want to check through the video to see if anyone was jumping and if that's it. But yeah, it was always the second floor. It seemed to be the issue, and it was a bit annoying. But other than that, I can't see Master being an issue. What uh, what about the other encounters in Master? What about like uh, Macrocosm that are champions there uh yeah so the lieutenants uh the colossuses they're barrier champions on all four plates okay uh that one actually was a little bit of a pain in the ass because but when they spawn 20... yeah i mean all right and i guess i should say it now right because it's going to come out at some point but it's only a matter of time i was telling playmates stream yesterday shackle grenades are going to get nerfed right like it's 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 all it's a matter of time shackle grenades is perhaps the strongest grenade in the game as far as isolating a powerful enemy from being like effective to a non-factor for an extended period of time now i don't think that they'll necessarily nerf like the power of the shackle grenade or the fragments that extend its duration and things like that. What I will, what I do think that will happen is that they'll implement a cooldown when you can throw the next shackle grenade. And I think it's going to be Maybe. an excessive cooldown. The thing is, is like, so those on plates, you're probably going to want more survivability. And then also from a damage perspective, because you are 15 power level under. You're going to want something to give you significant damage boost. So we more focused on having three wells rather than, you know, someone running strand to shackle a champion. Well, I just, Although, thought, I just, you know, it's just, it's been a topic of conversation. So like, you know, like any champion, um, like, if, I mean, even with survivability, man, it's like, you just, I mean, you can make bills where you can just throw shackle grenades it's almost unlimited. Right. And but then you lose out on the what's it like five ten percent buff from the well. Yeah, that's true. Well, it doesn't and, mean and, like and the needle storm super as well. So you for, have the people well, doing ad clear. Warlocks, you have the people doing ad clear. You know, have them run. That's where your one or two warlocks come from. You know, there is an interesting um, thing that we found out the uh, sidearm from the raid. I'm trying to figure out the name of it because I I don't actually Michael have it something memory. Yeah, it's like Miracle's Revenge or something like that, I think it's yeah. called. Um, we found out that that works really, really well <laughs> against champions. It just melts yeah. the shield, um, especially with the roll. The roll I've got was well, that's like, that has a high rate of fire, and it's like a three or four, it's like a four burst high rate of fire, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah, mine, mine had um, Unrelenting Frenzy, I think it is, on mine, or Hatchling or something like that. I'm trying to find it now. Okay. Um, because that was the adept that dropped, ironically, in the first week. The first challenge was that one. Uh, where is it? Yeah, mine has Unrelenting Frenzy. And obviously, if you put adept big ones on it, it it just melts uh the barrier champions um also really good against the uh the little pissions that spawn yeah uh, behind you yeah so um it was a case of you know we communicated we was just like you know centurions down on left and right colossus is going to spawn so we'd instantly turn shoot the signs that are going to spawn and then focus the champions but 
a lot of it's just a case of the the champions the the minigun aspect of it is really overpowered so i'd said that champions aren't really going to be an issue they aren't in general speaking but like if you're if you're not going to abuse certain mechanics like strand like suspend like you know chill clip or whatever they do become a bit of a problem especially like four of them at once so the third room gave us a little bit of a problem um, but we did manage to work it out fairly quickly, and it was just a case of, oh, the sidearm's actually really good and broken right now, and it's got a really high rate of fire and melts champions, so we'll just switch to that. And then, you know, we did a couple of damage phases. Um, it just got a bit too late. People had to go off and, you know, get food and help other people with other things and stuff. Yeah. So that's where we ended up was at Planets. Yeah, I personally have always used um, the chill clip fusion rifle that goes in the kinetic slot I forget what it's, it's called. very hit and miss it's riptide is the one you're on about yeah I, I, well i'm ripping i'm ripping through those guys like i use that that's that's my takedown because I'm, I'm typically i don't do ad clear there i think i've only done ad clear once i'm always on a platform and they work fine against the normal I mean, I'm. But whenever, I found against the barriers, it was very hit and miss. Like if you didn't hit barriers, a certain amount yeah. of shots, they yeah. become unfrozen, and then the first thing they do is whack their shield up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, obviously, like if I ran Riptide, I would want to run, you know, so, probably something that's rapid firing in the energy slot, so I could take their shield down and then continue with the fusion afterwards. Yeah, but. For me, it just sort of defeated the object of having one to try and freeze the champion if you're just going to take the barrier down anyway. Yeah. I mean, in that instance, you might as well run something like Arbalest or, you know, like Merkel's Revenge or Pulse Rifle of some sorts. Because if you're going to take the champion shield down anyway, you might as well just do it and then have something for better eye clearing, like Wither Horde or something, for example, in the top slot or, you know, whatever strat you're using. Yeah. But I think at that point, it's just down to personal preference. I think everyone's going to have a personal preference. Like Dave McDayface in your stream, I've played with him quite a few times. He doesn't use any champion mods. He will tell you Riptide is the be-all and end-all of the of the guns in terms of the pinnacle. Um, he never uses Unstop. He doesn't use Barrier. It doesn't use Overload. It's Riptide or nothing, and that's it. But oh, wow. you know, for me, I just I prefer to have the ability to have different champion mods if i need to and yeah. you know riptide's a last resort it does get you out of the bind if needs be but i just think there's way better guns out there for for the champion stunning purposes yeah i i, I think i'm with you on that one um curious Sorry, Dave, by the way for shouting you out <laughs> <laughs> what is the um i don't remember what the name of it's that like segue encounter where you have to progress through it and oh what well, the jump puzzle by the, the jumping jumps. puzzle are there did they put champions in there in master or i don't think so really i think it's just just general lads yeah i don't think there was any champions what about at nezarak i didn't get that far so i couldn't tell you oh but okay. okay i'd imagine and this is just my guess um the colossuses that spawn will more than likely be barrier champions That's how Bungie does it. If you look at every other raid they've done, that's how Bungie do it. <laughs> well, I mean... It's not just raids either. It's Grandmasters, Dungeons. <laughs> well, we got Grandmasters coming up next week, which I'm so stoked. I know. I'm missing the first week, unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately. I'm taking a break, and I'm enjoying a very nice holiday away. But they come out the day after my birthday on Tuesday for yeah. reset. Um, well, for ha- those who are interested, happy- it's ahead of scheduled birthday to you by the way it's um proving grounds that week if you're interested is the the weekly grandmaster nightfall to get stuck into it's actually one of the easier ones that it, unless they've changed it since i did it last it wasn't as bad as people made it out to be i think the real difficult ones this season are going to be um the mars battleground one is going to be a pain in the dick uh glassway that kill box room if you get it wrong it just becomes very chaotic very quickly um lake of shadows i know it's a bit of a weird one but i think since the rework and having the tormentor in there as well it's going to be a bit it's going to be a bit of a a tough one it's not going to be a, like the 15 20 minute burn through that we remember from you know well, grandmasters what, and I think in the lake of become... shadows what's the real it's the tormentor room because when those um 
when the eyeballs appear to shoot at you. Like they were pretty strong in Master, but in Grandmaster, if you get hit, if you get hit, I like, gonna one shot you. They're gonna one shot you, right? So like you're gonna have um, to really be. And it's the play. same in um, oh, what's the one on uh, Nessus the. The arms dealer, that's also got a tormentor in it now with the land tank. So not only did you have the issue with the land tank when you did it when it was a GM last time, you've now got instead of another land tank, you've got a tormentor, which is just unnecessarily tanky for no reason. And you know, in Master, that was that was a bit of a pain in the ass to do on a Master um, Nightfall. And like you said, GMs, I reckon that's gonna be an easy one shot as well. And I reckon it's probably gonna be like a solar burn because of the um the fucking ships in the in the final room, the one that's got the stupid turret. That's gonna that's gonna fuck so many runs. Yeah, I don't get it, man. It's like sometimes I can shoot the turret off and you're safe, and other times, like the turret, it just blows you out of the water before you even have a chance to look at it. Well, it's like other times the turret, like for example, in Master Lake of Shadows, uh, when you're on the outs, when you're on the dam part outside. Okay. Oh, I forgot it's in there as well. And yeah. The two, they have two threshers that come, right? And I'm sh I'm shoot I'm like I'm shooting the turret. I'm shooting the turret. And it's like I'm first of all, uh -huh. I'm doing less damage than if I was just shooting the body of the thresher. That's number one. Okay. And it's like it's not getting blown off. Like why nope. like why and then it pulls out an Uno reverse card on you and maps you. <laughs> yeah, and then it pulls like a Maverick from Top Gun and just, you know, it's just like... And they were oh, you're shooting me? Have yeah. this. <laughs> well, you know, they, they did nerf what the damage is. Um, they, I don't care what they say, they definitely didn't. I've been in uh, well, they some nerfed of those, the impact like post nerf, and I'm still yeah. getting like one or two shot, but a hundred resilience. Yeah, but the blast damage is still the same, so you know, and they they reduce the hit points on it. But yeah, if Bungie had their way, those still, threshers are going to be unstoppable threshers. Yeah, they're still. <laughs> I, I don't know how the threshers are in Neomuna because I really haven't been spent that much time on, on Neomuna. I went in there recently, actually, to a terminal overload. I don't think, from memory, I don't think they were that bad. No, but I think you could probably two shot them with Galahorn the last time I looked. Okay. Whereas before it was taken like a whole fucking seven clip. Yeah. There was. Uh... They're doing a lot of interesting changes. Um, speaking of nerfs, uh, they've got a big sandbox change. Um, I'm actually quite looking forward to it. Actually, there's quite a few weapons that are going to become viable again um i don't know if you've got the top in front of you or do you want me to send you my notes you you, you can go over it the only i just have this week's bob up oh the most key points for me for this week's twab was most activities are going to receive adjustments to difficulty and or rewards so enemies aren't going to be as tanky especially in legend and master activities um scoring objectives will be adjusted to better suit boundaries and guardian rank progression improved terminal overload matchmaking and adjustments to team unfriendly vanguard bounties are coming and more which is it's one of those you shoot yourself in the foot beginnings because in one in one side of it you've got the very very top percent of the destiny community crying out the game's too easy and then you've obviously got the casuals, and then I probably fit somewhere in between, you know, the casuals and the the elites. You know, do we want the game to be too easy? Do we want the game to be too hard? Do you want it somewhere in the middle? You know, and on one hand, you've got people crying out, you know, the game's too easy. But then by, by Bungie's announcement, this is not me saying it, it's just an opinion based off the information in front of me. Um, you know, we're saying that the game's too easy, but then Bungie are going, well, actually, based off statistics and facts, the game's too hard, and we're going to nerf Legend of Master difficulties because we think it's overpowered. So we joke about a power creep on one hand, but then based off Bungie's own statistical analysis, you know, they need to nerf the Le Legend of Master difficulties because it's too hard based off their current, you know, perspective of what they've forecasted or whatever. So it's yep. interesting to see that that was like the key point of this week's twelve was like, okay, look, we think it's too difficult, so we're going to nerf it for you. <laughs> and like the nerf does still put it the difficulty higher 
than it was going into the season. So things are more challenging, but they're not. I think as a lot of it helps with the um, where you're capped now. Like before, do you know, in like previous seasons where you went to like Spire Master and Dungeon yeah. um, Master content, you you weren't capped. You you were at like full power the whole time. But now I have noticed in most master content, you're, you're always like 15, 20 under, basically like GM content level the whole way through. Yeah. So I think that's going to help as well. So I think they probably got over, over forecasted for the, the, what the cap would look like. And then if they, they've now got to rein it back in a little bit, because, you know, you get one shot in every activity that's <laughs> legend or master. Well, they still need to take, they still need to give all the other planetary locations the Neomuna treatment. Right, because the difficulty that you experience in the Neomuna uh, patrol areas, it sh it should be like that everywhere. Brutal. You, I went into them. <laughs> maybe the <laughs> only to... place where it's not scaled like that maybe would be like the Cosmodrome, because that's, that's like, what I was going to say. I think is it with like Sean Han and the Cosmodrome well, or BDZ? For the new lights, you, it's, it's, it's you, you, Sean Han's in the Cosmodrome, but for like the new light get... players. You don't want them, you know, you load in a Destiny the first time as a new light and all of a sudden a fucking thresher comes over. <laughs> and you're like, you know, there's you're you're done. You know what I mean? Like you they should they should do an April Fool's just like this is made from from software. Welcome to Dark Souls, bitch. And then just fucking up the power level. You know, fucking like barrier fucking servitors coming in and just mapping it's you. Funny. <laughs> I saw a meme where it was like the worst is I don't know, it's like harder than a Elden Ring boss or something. And it was a Thresher with like an overload <laughs> bar <laughs> on top of it. Uh, I thought that was hilarious. That. Yeah. Um I quite like the ability like the scoring objectives to be brought in line to better suit our bounties and the rank progression. I like that. That's a nice little touch. Like I don't want to go into master content and try and get 300,000 score for guardian rank progression. Like I don't fuck around with that. Um, you know, and I'm going to do GMs anyway. So, you know, I think having some bounties to suit the progression and just the natural ebb and flow of like a guardian's play style and a lifestyle. I think that would be quite nice. Yeah. The, uh, um, the progression within the points with that is on point, but there are triumphs where you have to get over 200,000. And it's like you couldn't do that in Master Lake of Shadows this week. Like the no, most you you'd have get to get was into, like um, like one hundred and thirty-five to one hundred and forty thousand. Like that was the most you you'd have to go into GMs. Like you gotta GM, do a GM level, for then... that, right? So that's a little over. Um, I didn't know matchmaking in Terminal Overload was an issue. I've never found any issue with it, so I yeah. just want to skip past that one. Um, adjustments to team unfriendly Vanguard bounties. That was a that's a pretty interesting one. I wonder what they mean by that because most of the bounties you get are just like oh I know what that is and volatile and suppressed. No, and... no 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 no. And this is like my biggest pet peeve. Okay. Oh go on then. Which one is it? It's for it's like okay. Here is well it's two things right. I don't think it's necessarily addressing my pet peeve, but. It's addressing the bounty pet peeve. So let's just say in order to complete the Vanguard strike, you have to be on a Void or Strand subclass to get credit for it. Well, the, oh. bounty, the bounty is get 50 solar kills. Right, okay, I see what you so mean. So see how like that doesn't align with like what the modifier is. But what they should be doing, and I don't I hope it comes out of this is you shouldn't have to have like if it's void or strand surge i shouldn't be forced to be on void or strand to get credit for that run right like just doing it i should get credit for it right because i think it wouldn't be an, an a harsh change either especially when you've now got a you've gone from like it three per week to to five it doesn't make sense right because we used to do three, now you have to do five. And that's fine. You want more people in the playlist. That's To me, that's the only reason why. But <laughs> you're not locking my equipment. 
I can run whatever subclass I want. And as long as I switch at the end to whatever the featured surge is, I'm going to get credit for it. But why force me to do the switch at the end if I want to run something different than what the surge is, right? Now, yeah, just... people might be like, well, Sloop, why wouldn't you run the surge? You get extra damage. And I'm like, well, it's a regular Vanguard strike. Like, I'm not really... I don't need extra damage. <laughs> right? Like, if I want to go, like, super god mode... Yeah, I'll take full advantage. And for the most part, I do adhere to it. But there are so many times where it's like... You do it in content that matters, though. Like, Defiant Battlegrounds on Legendary Difficulty or Legend Dares of Eternity. Like, in a in a Vanguard Strike that's 1600 power level, I don't know fuck what the Surge is. I yeah. want to run my Arc Punch Melee but In Battlegrounds, you don't have to match the Surge to get credit for a run. You just have to do the run. But you don't, some, but, but like you said yourself, if you want to go god mode and actually get the benefit of the damage, yeah. you, you'd you rather do it. But I'm not going to get extra. I don't care about 15%, 25% extra damage on a strike. Yeah. But why that's a thing in Vanguard Ops is... I don't, I don't get it. It doesn't Maybe they'll sense. rework it. But, I mean, they're doing loads of changes, and you know these are just signs of things to come. So maybe they'll just evaluate it in the future and be like, maybe it doesn't matter. We can hope. We well, can pray. I mean, that's the that's the good thing about Bungie is that you know you, they don't get as much shit as in the past as the whole we're listening. But it's obvious that they do. It's obvious that they care about their product and the quality of their service. Um. They're artisans and master craftsmen at what they do, whether it be sound, the visuals. Um, you know, I don't know about you know the marketing team with the transmog stuff. I'm not really going to give them any credit <laughs> this podcast. Just, <laughs> but just get that out of there. Everyone else in the studio, you're fucking awesome. All right, but those people. Speaking of the um, <laughs> the the we're listening. We're finally getting the one thing we've been asking for for ages, and it's relating to build crafting. And I don't know if you know where I'm going to go with this already or not. What um, another for... another glaive in Trials of Osiris next season? No, we can finally craft exotic armor, like focus exotic armor. Yeah. So for those who missed it in the TWAB, um, there's going to be better ways to obtain exotic armor. They're um, introducing something called Vex Strike Force, which will be awarding unobtained exotic armor pieces on a knockout list. Um, changing it from the current um, meta of going into like lost sectors on master and legendary difficulty to get a randomized drop at like 15%. So that's going to be introduced soon. Um, they are introducing as of next season, season 21 in 70 days time, they're going to be introducing an exotic armor focusing. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be one of those content creators that gives my two cents worth because we don't know what it looks like. We don't know how it's going to play out, but it's been confirmed by Bungie. We are getting finally exotic armor focusing, which means that if we've got the role already, we'll be able to re-roll it at higher stats and the stats that we want rather than having to go through fucking lost sectors for a 10% chance. Yeah, It's great. Like, I... You know, all the shit we give them for, and you said earlier, uh, you know, on a point about, you know, is it worth value for money and stuff? For somebody who's been playing this for as long as I have, that right there, I don't care if they charge me £100 a month for that. Like, that's just going to save me days of time of having to go into, like, rotations, waiting for it to be in the weekly loss sector and doing it on Master and yeah. all that other bullshit. Well, you'd still like, have to it's... do the loss sector to get it if you don't have it. Like, if, if you don't have... The uh, specific piece. Let's say if you don't yeah. have whatever, like what's what's the a new one? Um, a buyant the leap. Calderman's Ridge, for example. Or Calderman's oh, yeah. Or, yeah. Let's say a buyant leap for the the Titan boots, right? Like you have to do a lost sector on Boots Day to get to get it dropped. Now, if that's the only one that you need, like it'll drop, right? Like when it does drop for you, you know, and like the weight. Like, I don't even do, like, Master anymore because it's more time effective. Like, the uptick that you get in RNG for doing a Master clear compared to a, a Legend clear is... 5%. It's, it's insignificant. And I can it's do... 5%. I can do three Legend runs to, like, one... In one Master. One Master. So, you know, like, that's stupid. You know, like, it shouldn't be like that. So... 
I think they're making it might not be lost sectors as well because they said that they're going to introduce the Vex Strike Force, which will award unobtained exotic armor. So <laughs> potentially, yeah. I don't know if it means that it's going to move to that system or if they're going to have like both systems running side by side. But like yeah. the Vex Strike Force will have all well, of your good. unobtained ones. That's good. And so the maybe if you don't if you don't want to do the solo thing, now you can hop in with your bud. And, I know. think they're probably still going to make it that you have to do it solo. I don't think they're probably going to get rid of that side of the mechanic, but it might be something different other than Lost Sectors, hopefully. To make you do the, the Vex Offensive uh, solo? Is that what the Strike Force is? The Vex Offensive? I thought the Strike Force was... Uh, or I guess, I'm, Maybe I'm thinking of Terminal Overload. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, Terminal but they said this What's is specific. Vex Strike it says Force? Vex. Is that something that's new that's coming out then? I'm gonna Google it now. I've never heard of it, so I thought it was something new. But it's definitely not Terminal Overload. I thought, like, uh, I thought the Strike Vex Force. Strike Force was associated with Neomuna. It's a public event. It's a public event, so that's a group thing. So this is going to be interesting. Then it changes everything, rather than having to do it on solo. Because the Vex Strike Force currently happens exclusively on Neo Muna and its location will vary because it only occurs during an incursion zone which changes from week to week. As such, it will place Vex Strike Force spawns. Um, this is a very rare public event and there's no specific chance of triggering other than waiting. So you're still going to have to spend time, but it's you could do it as a group activity by the looks yeah. of it potentially. But at least that's like a way, little nugget. Take that you know, it's like, sector. hey, holy shit, it's going on. It's a little nugget, and you can get the... Is the drop guaranteed, or is it RNG? That's the thing. It's unobtained exotic armor, so I'm guessing it'll just be basically any armor piece that you oh, haven't okay. got. So, so it won't just, be yeah. specific in terms of, let's say you're going for a helmet, it might oh. drop a pair of boots that you might not have So yet. for active players, that's really not going to matter. because Oh yeah, it's part, neither here nor there. So that's that's for like the casuals and the new life. So that's fine. That's fine. And they're going to be updating more than fifteen exotic armor pieces as part of a sandbox update in the next season as well. So there's going to be fifteen exotics that are potentially going to be reworked. Um, touching on this, this is speculation. I don't want to say it either or, but somebody mentioned in my Discord recently that there was a a data leak. Dare I say it? Um regarding starfire protocol and if it's true starfires are being nerfed into the ground let me find the the thing so as part of a data leak recently, there's a piece of information that says Starfire Protocol is going to be reducing the amount of grade, grenade energy granted per damage instance to 5% from 20%. So what this means in actual terms for you as a Wellock user is you're only going to get one grenade charge back every eight seconds instead of two. Now, a Well of Radiance lasts 15 seconds, which basically means for your, your one well, you're going to be getting grenades. potentially two grenades per well rather than, you know, the current spam ability of, like, I don't know, fucking 20 plus per well. No one will ever use it again. No. And it's going to get a, um, I'm calling it now, it's going to get an ornament as part of the fashion thing because it's not had an ornament for years, but, but now you it's being paid silver that. for. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope it's not true. I really hope it's, it's, you know, a falsified leak. Oh but my god! If if Panther, that does happen, that's what's gonna happen. They're gonna come out with an ornament, and then they'll celebrate that, and then it's gonna get nerfed into the fucking ground. Oh my lord! Praise the traveler that does. Oh my god! I think that's the biggest nerf they've done. If they if that data mine is true, I think that's the biggest nerf they've done since the original Galahorn on Destiny One. I can't remember of anything else that they've nerfed into the ground as much as that. Because they, they said they were going to nerf Heart of Innermost Light, but that still works just as it did, you know, a couple seasons ago. It's still viable. You can still do the same thing. It's just you don't get it as as often. Whereas this, it's going from, like, I don't know, 20 grenades plus to you get two and that's it. And you, you, you that's your lot. And I hope you're happy with it. 
I'm trying to think it's crazy. of like an individual exotic either weapon or armor. But if well, they said they said they were. Um, I, I can name a few like worm gods. They said they nerfed, but um, think back to one two punch. Uh, void shotgun, void melee build with a Titan last season with Solo Operative. Uh, Syntheseps. Actually, I do remember one. There was the Titan Boots. Do you remember the one that turned you into Thor with the, the Arc Sparks when you get a powered melee with your hammer? Um, oh, fuck. What was it called? Oh, uh... Dune Marchers? Dune Marchers, yeah. But they're still good. They're still good, but they're not as effective as they used to be. It's a massive nerf. Massive, if it happens. Well, hope, listen, I'm all about like retuning like overused weapons, specifically exotics, but that's that's so severe. Like you don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want to down tune it to a degree where it makes it useless. You're going to go from a point of where everyone's using it to no one uses it. I mean, it really is like, is Starfire really like messing up the content? Like, I don't even see that many people use it anymore. Like, there's usually like, in every raid, there's at least one, right? Maybe two. But outside of that, like I see people experimenting using uh, like a variety of things. I, I use anything and everything. I've got builds with the stag helmet, builds with sun braces, uh, builds with necrotic grit. Sun bracers got... is because of the art, because of the new fragment and everything. Like that's sun braces is just sun bracers right is now. like the new starfire because now you have the healing aspect of it. And it, I think you it's know like... what sun braces remind me of? Do you remember um, back in Destiny One, the Warlock Super that was self res? Yeah, its perk is basically sun braces. You just spam oh. grenades for like Wasn't five like, to ten uh, seconds. Vikings funeral or something like that. Yeah, something like that. You just yeah. it's basically like sun braces. You just threw solar grenades for like five to ten seconds at anything and everything that moved. It's yeah. great. I think uh how don't we mention it? I think I'm gonna use the sun bracers this weekend for a lot of stuff. Because I've have I've, fun. I've, I've had it on the <laughs> shelf. I've used it before, you know, like when the season first started, I that's what I was using. I was using that. Then I went back to But the it's Star it's Fox. even it's even better now that you like you said, you got the mods that, you know, grenade kills uh kill you, you've got the uh fire sprites that they've added in that gives you restoration and yeah. radiance. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's pretty good right now. Yeah. Um, plus all the orbs you can generate as well. I don't know about you. I don't want to say it in case Bungie listen and you know nerf it, but the um the amount they're, of orbs you can listening. generate right now. <laughs> the amount of orbs you can generate right now is fucking crazy. I um just in the Percy boss alone with my arc build, I generated a hundred and fifty one orbs. Crazy. Like that's crazy numbers. <laughs> On the, on the the sun bracer warlock build. No, I used the um the one that I mentioned to you earlier, the arc punchy one combination oh, okay. flow in okay. assassin's cow. Okay. Um, but yeah, 151 orbs just by using like heavy handed and dynamo and hands on. Yeah, you know it's crazy. Just you probably had a reaper on too, so you were I didn't actually. Oh, you now did. that you mention it. My build could be better. I could put Reaper on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I mean... I, I know what I'm doing when I get back. Going straight on to Hunter. Yeah. Well, I, I think we're going to wrap it up here, VP. All right? Unless there's something else that you wanted to bring up. Uh, Not that I could think of. And the other things that was, you know, mainly of interest was the build crafting. They're obviously adding two new armor mods. Um, and for those that are interested in the seasons... There's no power level increase this season. So right. um eighteen thirty, I think, including artifacts, is the highest you can go for the next couple seasons, which will be interesting, not having a power creep. A lot of good stuff. And you know, we we broke down a lot of different topics today. You know, we started with the war. 
uh we started with uh you know catching up with you um free to play entry into paying for the expansion cost benefit uh transmog cost the master raid and then now with the recent twab breakdown updates exotic armor what to expect next season i mean i, I pretty healthy conversation today as always on zero hour podcast uh bp thanks for your time Honored again to be your guest. Thank you so much for your time. All right. You and have... Bungie, if you are listening, please give this man some sympho chords. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Just shut me up already. This this guy's going to be at your headquarters tomorrow if you don't appease the uh, synth chord lord. My ticket is in the kiosk as we speak. <laughs> um, but listen, man, thanks again for coming out. Uh, anyone viewing now... Thank you for everyone in the chat uh, for participating. Uh, anyone who's lurking, if you're not familiar with BP, go check his channel out. Click the follow, hit the sub button, do all that kind stuff. Follow on the socials, Twitter, TikTok. He's all over the place. Um, good egg over here. Excellent Sherpa. A great Discord community he has. So definitely go and check all of that out. And, you know, always a pleasure to have you on. Um, thanks for your candor. Um, as we always say here, you know, these conversations are just productive and helping us level up together. And there's nothing else. Be safe. Just one last thing for me then. Uh, so for those that are in my community, uh, Straving Flower, Dave McDayface, to name a few, please make sure you give this wonderful person a follow uh, on Twitch. He goes live, does Destiny things also, um, obviously, as well as the Zero Hour podcast. It's been a pleasure to be invited back out. Uh, for those from my community, as you know, this will be my last live session for a week as I'm going on holiday. And obviously, weekends are family day, so I'll be spending time with Vixie before we go away on my birthday holiday. Um, just want to thank you for all the support. Obviously, again, you know where to reach me if it needs be. And from that, I wish you all have a wonderful weekend, a lovely week, and then I'll be back to help you guys come Friday. Well said. Well said. And for everyone out there, gamers, guardians, internet, be safe, stay vigilant, and as always, may the light protect us all.